Alex, joined here by Ibra. And uh, we're really excited to watch this first Tech and World Tour Dojo event here in Kentucky for the year. Uh, we've got about 50 plus entrants right now. I think last I saw was around 55 or so. It's probably our biggest tournament ever. It's exciting. We are really looking forward to seeing how everything goes. Uh, I know that you can follow along home uh, on Twitter with the hashtag QCS Outlaws and uh, catch all the action uh, on social media. Otherwise, stay tuned with us for some uh, really good tech in here. Uh, we've got a number of really high level competitors here that I'm surprised are showing out for this tournament. Uh, really looking forward to the games. There's been so much to digest with Tekken 8 right now, and I think that we're going to really be in for a show here. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, it's, it's really crazy seeing how far just Tekken has came here in the state. Certainly. I remember. 12 man brackets during seven like pretty pretty week to week you know and then we yeah got 54 for a dojo event nice. yeah i mean i remember victim the of rituals in the building yeah the first few that i went to uh, just some of the uh, smaller like monthly events we were having getting pretty good numbers but now seeing you know the start of tekken 8 thinking about how much you know room to grow there is seeing that the first bracket here the twt dojo uh season or tekken world tour season rather already at 50 plus that's putting a lot of points on the line for these competitors and i'm really excited to see what happens we've got our first match coming up here and it seems to be medic, medic. versus i'm not sure the other person's tag but we should be seeing some leo action here from medic and i'm excited to see some character variety today i mean i've been playing a handful of characters in this game trying to get used to the different tools that they have seeing changes from tekken 7 to tekken 8 seeing how heat impacts things and sure we're seeing impacts things we're we're seeing one of the brand new characters here with Reyna already. Becky Starting the Bard is their name. Gotcha. I should pull that up battle. myself here. All right, getting right into it. Here we go. Medic South Slow. Outlaws. Let's get it started. Medic's a longtime local gatekeeper. Uh, plays all kinds of games. Starting off with that back one more action. Getting into heat quick. All right, no loss. And you know, Reyna, she's just got so much pressure that I think a lot of people aren't quite used to so far. I mean, I know that obviously this character has Mishima roots. I mean, she's clearly in the war somewhere in the Mishima bloodline. She's and someone's dog. <laughs> yeah, certainly. She's got a lot of Heihachi in her, and it's really interesting to see how people are using some of these tools. Pretty, really high rated, but at the same time, I've heard a lot of good things about Leo. And you're seeing Medic get to it already. Yeah, it's just get started you gotta do your best to stop it Ooh. and you know throws in this game are just so strong now i don't think that one was necessarily a punish there but it's crazy just how much they've changed the system to accommodate for this new pressure that they have in tekken 8 knowing that you know some throws can be punishes on armor moves uh, the counter hit throw system is really tough to work tracking around. throws tracking on the throw lucky tracking throws those are armor moves I've ever thrown in this game throws and armor moves feel like kind of the name of the game at certain levels here heat engagers on block we got all kinds of stuff. medic saying that does not matter to me we're taking this game one with authority though Quick 3-0, it gets us started off uh, pretty quick here. Pretty pretty typical like Leo play though. You know? Oh yeah, certainly. If you don't know what you, maybe if you don't know how to fight Leo, you might get random. And you know, I haven't battle. tested it myself as much as I feel like I should, but I think they made back one four harder to step in this game. Before it, it was like it. it was depending on the character, of course. If this was Tekken 7, I I mean, obviously we cannot know how Reyna would have felt in this, or in that game rather, but she may have been one that could step that in the game, and now I'm not too sure in this game. They also gave Leo a new extension to back one that we haven't quite seen yet here. Might not need it at this rate. I think, Medic uh, is I getting think Medic, going. I think Medic's just gonna run his Might be the case. And Reyna's failing to establish any sort of four four two pressure here. Ooh, and that's evasion. Alright, getting back on the offense there. Now let's see what this Reyna player can really do now, especially with the DF1-2. Bringing it back, especially with the heat. You can never count somebody out in this game, it seems. Especially with how potent the indicators are. Heat smashes, it feels like, for some characters, just an amplified rage drive. Such a unique system. I mean, I know a lot of us are really kind of struggling at times to get used to the new heat 
factors in neutral, but it's certainly interesting to see how these competitors are utilizing it. And another throw here, getting some damage to start the round. Even a relatively safe. Medic is really trying to dig out a bit of a hole that they got with the HP to start the round, but doesn't seem like a problem now. Medic is trying to move into his next game. Oh yeah, certainly. And you know, I know that he plays a number of games. I'm not sure what all he may be signed up for here today. And we've got a number of different games running here at Mid-South Outlaws that you can tune into, and but... closes it out. Yeah, I mean, Way you're gonna see low. plenty of Tekken 8 here in the meantime, oh, yeah. moving from one game to the next with authority from Medic. We're gonna see more heat usage in general. Oh yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what some of these competitors are bringing out. I mean, I already know that we're gonna see like I said, some decent character variety. I, I know that there's at least three or four Leo players here. Yeah, I think I've seen some Mishima players out there. You know, the I was casuals. thinking about it last night, the variety of Mishimas in this game, and they've done a pretty good job, I'd say, at just giving more personality to characters. Like, Devil'jin feels like a new Devil'jin to I me. I hate to say it, he's kind of cool. He's cool. He's kind of cool. Certainly not the easiest to deal with in neutral. I know that his heat smash is definitely one of them that feels like red light, green light, to be yeah. honest. I feel like Kazuya is a little unrepresented right now. Kazuya, I feel like people are kind of sleeping on. I yeah. mean, that character, I feel like as we go, people are really seeing just what he's able to bring to the table in this game. Some of those heat engagers, him basically having a demon paw now with the FF2, feels so potent. Yeah, as we, as the game evolves and certain characters get touched, positively or negatively, uh, you can see Kazuya rise. Oh yeah, and especially with the the next balance patch, excuse me, balance patch seeming like they're going to focus on uh, character uniqueness. We'll see what that means. Yeah, Kazuya is already, you know. You think we'll get like those, uh, like remember those season four, season five, Tekken seven random oh, yeah. new moves? Oh yeah, Wall I feel bounces. like there's a lot of room to work with here. I don't really know if they're going to feel like giving new heat engagers to characters. I feel like that's a slippery slope. I feel like we got a lot to deal with at the moment. There's already a lot that uh, certain characters are able to do, especially compared to others. It feels uh -oh. like some some characters you can definitely see. We were just talking about Nina earlier. Uh, the down back one plus two that she has such a potent new heat engager, new tool in general for that character. Scary Just character. Able to start that offense that is really the name of the game in Tekken 8 is aggression, and he just plays into that so well with the way that it's structured at the moment. So it's really going to gonna be interesting to see how they adjust that moving on. Yeah, and I mean, every character applies their own massive mental stack to you too. There's so oh, much yeah. to deal with. You gotta Certainly. be active, you gotta be Rarely passive, honestly. But, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, some caution is definitely required. Mm -hmm. We got our next, guys. Patience in Tekken is clearly still a virtue. There's clearly so much to do in this game defensively, but you really got to make it count. Yeah. You what really a... need to lock in, know your punishes gotta in this lock game. In. Oh. Oh, I'm so excited to see some yeah. more matches, some more Tekken today, see how much defense some of these players have developed alongside this offense that, like I said, it's the name of the game. Yeah, I'm trying to feel something. Uh, you know, I'd like to see people deal with gin pressure differently <laughs> than my own experiences. Uh, Trust yeah, me. He's a problem matchup for me personally at the moment. I do not, <laughs> I do not know quite what's going on in that matchup, I feel, but I know that it, he's up to no good. If you if you turn on the lights for his hitboxes, everything is just a massive green box. Yeah. There's still some stuff that I need to brush up on, but I know just as we were talking about, the heat engagers, his demon pulse, fantastic. The standing four, instead of getting a counter hit launch in this game, still getting a guaranteed heat engager off the one plus two. It feels so strong. He has so much time to hit confirm that to, to off what? the counter hit. Just the two one, the two one series yeah. is just nuts. Uh, down back four being as good as it always was. I feel like no counter hit launch, but you know he's plus. Yeah, with you know how I've been trying to go through a lot of the roster, just get my familiarity with their changes from Tekken Seven. I've yet to really dive into the Mishimas all that much. I yeah. feel like it's a little bit of a blind spot still. We got to be in the mood. Oh yeah, certainly. That's like a you know month long project yeah. for any of them, honestly. But there is a uh, a lot of potential for Jin to be a big problem in this uh, game. I'd I say people I are think, already seeing it. I think uh, once certain characters that have been discussed meet 
A in an adjustment, you know, you might oh, see yeah. Jin pop up there too. Oh yeah. I, I don't think he's one to be slept on. Elisa. It's at the same under time. Disgust. We've yet to see a true major event for this game. That's why I'm so excited to yeah. see some of these matches today. This is such a season, large baby. event. Here at Mid South Outlaws, we've got over 50 people who showed up just for Tekken 8. And shoot, I think it's probably around 300 people in this venue. It's uh, yeah, it's nice and packed. Games. There's a lot of games. Well represented. And I'm really glad to see Tekken Shining. I'm looking forward to seeing just a variety think, of characters. Yeah, I think a cool thing about being in Kentucky is like, you know, we're. We're really close to the Cincinnati people, oh, yeah. Columbus crew, all the Indiana guys. Tennessee comes up. Sometimes you get some yep. Illinois people here. I saw Dual Kevin. I don't know if he's still located in Illinois, but and yeah. you know those regions are people all drive here. well represented today. Yeah. I know that Fusion came up from Tennessee. Yeah, just talking to him. Grown uh, man, grown man Fusion. Yeah, a number of the Ohio players, of course. Kentucky, pretty well represented in our own right. Really looking forward to seeing how some of these players who have been grinding the weeklies and monthly events can do against you know this really just amalgamation of regions here. Yeah, that's the, just the Midwest, you know. You yeah, kind of, absolutely. The Mid South Kentucky. even today. Yeah, we're, today we're Mid South Outlaws. We're still waiting on our next match here, so uh, you know, just gonna think about this huge bracket still. Uh, it, it's, it's just cool, a matter man. of. Really cool. We've got a lot of attacking to get through. I feel like there's so much that you could say about this game with the heat. Uh, you know, some of the counter hit tools don't feel quite as prevalent. Minus as 15 on block rage arts. Yeah. Thinking about the main like differences from Tekken 7, though, I feel like by the end of it, so many people were so focused on, oh, well, not just walking into some of these big counter hit launchers. I was just talking earlier about Claudio. He has had multiple counter hit launchers from Tekken 7 changed for this game to accommodate for the heat system. And I would really like to see some Claudio on stream today. I think that there's at least a couple Claudio players here, and we can see some of that representation. It's I feel just, like you know, uh, Claudio's had a nice power creep from yeah. his days in 7. It's just it's a bad. matter of... Um, Vanilla you know, 7 compared to where he is now. Seeing that character uniqueness, yeah. seeing how people are able to put it into play today, seeing how balance patches go. I think there's a lot of potential for this game. It's just you know, a matter of... Yeah. Uh, Namco really keeping up with things. Growing pains, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone's As with every Tekken. Everyone's frustrated at some point. I mean, I remember looking back at, like, vanilla Tekken 7 in arcades from the arcade footage. And, you know, Korean arcades, some of these streams that there's so much footage out there. Just <laughs> see where Tekken 7 was and the game that it ended up becoming. I mean, we, at one point, we were seeing Brian counter hit uh, launch on Hatchet Kick. And that's pretty absurd to think about. But, you know, even, uh, each game goes through these changes. Even Tekken 8's, like, first beta test. There was yeah. some, some wild Ooh. stuff going on in there. And, you know, Claudio was one of those that had a lot going on in that normal hit. Shaheen. You know, FF4, the sort of jumping knee he had, uh. he could get a guaranteed 1-2 off of that. And I don't think that was found until, like, the last day of the uh, the first network test. Did like, they take oh, it away? Yes, they took uh. that away. Still a very potent move, though. You could tell me that it was still in, and I believe it's, <laughs> it's pretty strong. Well, you know, Kazuya was also one of those characters that they had a lot of changes going from the network test to the beta and then to release. People were able to clearly, you know, grind out that demo a lot, play some Kazuya, play some Jin, really get their footing with the uh, new system mechanics. But I feel like, you know, each of these characters feels like they're in a pretty comfortable spot. It's just a matter of figuring out how the game is going to develop how these players are going to adapt to these changes and really seeing what people are capable of in a new game. Still waiting on, I'm sure they'll come up soon. Probably tied up in other games. Another thing about this region is uh, you can see a pretty high level Tekken player but they'll also play oh, yeah. to your strive or something. So. Yeah, you were just talking to somebody earlier who was in the uh, Ultra Street Fighter 4 tournament. That just wrapped up right before Tekken. Those men are probably on the way home. <laughs> They have careers, children. You know, that's how Tekken 7 felt by the end of it. That game saw a lot of growth, not just through the game, but through the players as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we were talking. What's up? So we're setting up a match right now. 
Okay. All right, sounds like we are uh, just processing a couple of DQs in the bracket, so that's been a bit of a hold up right now, but rest assured, seems like we are getting a match shortly, and uh, gonna be right back into things here. We already get, got a good little appetizer with the bracket, with Medic showing out. Do what he does best. He oh, doesn't yeah. even know Absolutely. what he's doing. It's <laughs> great. He oh. is one of those. That's a game talent. Oh. Get these, these two peeps' names. Well, I feel like we uh, we might have a bit of a spoiler on one of the characters for this, seeing the Jun Kazama on the jacket here. Jun is another one that has been a problem for a lot of people. Even getting the spike combo nerf uh, from launch up till this point, like even seeing something like that already change, clearly, well, I would say unintended. But it's clearly something that Namco decided, okay, this seems a bit strong. Yeah, no, and, I, um, I think she's in a good place currently. She seems plenty capable. Yeah. I was fighting a June the other day in ranks, and she's another one, just like Devil Jin with the heat smash, red light, green light. You really have to pump the brakes in neutral when they're in heat, especially with the uh, practically Estus Flask, mm -hmm. heat smash, uh, health regeneration yeah, she that just, she has. She just pops in one, you know, she yeah. feels great afterward. Strong normals. Oh yeah. Really, really just a complete package character at the moment, the state of the game. And you know, she's one of them that really takes getting used to yeah. seeing a lot. Like, obviously you could say the same for each character in this game. None of these characters you're just going to pick up and play the matchup. You need to learn some stuff. But yeah, it's you got really some play style variants. It, it's really just another level with June because you're also looking at Harry. stuff that well. To me, it seems so familiar with Asuka, and she has her own twist on things. I know that a lot of it, you know, was in prior games. She's got some legacy stuff there that was in Tag 2. I'm been not, two games since then. I'm though. not super familiar with her in Tag 2, to be fair. But visually discerning things, a bit of a challenge in its own right. Looks like we got our second guy lined up. We're ready to get into more Tekken here, it seems. Talking about her earlier. Got more than one Nina player here today. That's nice. And you know, in a game that's so focused on aggression, Nina thrives. She sure does. May not be Nina, to be fair. I mean, uh, we're still at character select. We're still yeah, setting our buttons. No. Let's see Yoshi. Have you fought, fought much Yoshi in this game? A lot, actually. <laughs> a lot of Yoshi. I don't know why. I guess it's the first week, you know. He had some of that damage that they, yeah. they kind of toned down, I believe, in one of those fixes. I'm not or is too it still the same? Sure how I know that they had changed flash yeah. combo routes. Uh, I'm not too terribly sure how that actually impacts the Minus metagame three or was the, the character. Magic number. Yeah, it's just it, it's so much to deal with with some of these new strings that they've given certain characters. I'm really looking forward to seeing how people adapt to these changes. Shaheen is another one. Unique matchup going on here. Shaheen with the DF4 string extensions. They took a move that, you know, it was a basic mid check he had in Tekken 7. Developed it so much, really built out this character. Looking forward to seeing what we have here. Things are getting a little exciting in here, elsewhere. Round one. Get into round one. All right, getting into it here with King Dank versus Tom Pockets. Immediately starting with some of the new stuff. And you know, that's what I was talking about Oof. with some of these moves that give the guaranteed heat engagers new game, new stuff to get used to. And it's so interesting to see just you know, how the meta develops. It's one of those games, too, where if you let a little naivete shine through, and it can do wonders. Oh, yeah. Round start heat smashes. I mean, I don't know about all that. But... We're getting aggressive here from the jump in that counter hit launch. It's looking cool. But you know, sometimes with Yoshi, you really just get stopped in your tracks. Yeah, um, you know, you get hit one I'm time. no stranger to that feeling of, oh, what's this character doing? You know, you gotta watch for the flash. It's just, all these matchups, they take so much effort in this game. That's what sets Tekken apart. And that guard break, you know, that 
just seems so strong. You have to watch for it from Shaheen between the guard break and the low heat smash from Stealth Step. There's so much new stuff to watch for in this character. Really interesting. And the running two change. Look at that chip damage. So nice. Oh yeah. And that's what you're gonna be thriving on in second eight. Building that aggression, even if you're just forcing them to block something, hey, that's pressure. Hopefully the early heat usage doesn't really Yoshi moves. Oh, being Yoshi, always gonna be tricky with those unblockable setups. Round four, fight. big move usage. Yeah, it's really neat to see where They've taken Yoshi. I'm pretty sure somebody from the Soul Calibur team had worked on some of the design stuff for Tekken 8. You can definitely see some inspiration yeah. when it comes to some of these animations with Yoshi in particular. I mean, every character has so much flash in this game. <laughs> so much flash. So much flash. Certainly. Well, Yoshi's definitely concerned with just running around. Oh, yeah. But both in oh. heat. Bro, I would have done that for you. Oh, oh, got away with murder there, but didn't last long. We're Still going to a though. final game. Just trying to get some offense going here. I mean, it's mostly even, but the heat might change that. And the heat engagers, such a potent thing to watch for. How do you feel about this stage? You know, this is one of the, I'd say one of two between this and Yakushima that are pseudo infinites. And it just, again, it changes the game a bit. This stage is my training stage. Oh yeah? Yeah, this is my training stage. I, every time I play here though, I rarely see the wall, so it's impressive that they actually yeah. play one. That wraps up that first game with a solid showing. Uh, Yoshimitsu, just such a potent character in this game. It, it's really just interesting to see all this character variety. Shaheen. Was not well, Shaheen, the character himself, I feel like was not quite seen as much throughout Fight. Tekken 7 and earlier on, especially season one, blow high. Seen him a lot, yeah. And now it feels like people are, are really catching on to this character strength, but hey, you know, she's right there with him. Doesn't matter with me, he gave me. Oh, yeah. Places to be. That's side step too, Shaking and I. I really like that new low. Interesting to uh, to see. Excuse me. Interested to see how he might apply the pressure here. Oh, tried and true frame trap. Maybe that was a late flash from the Yoshi. It could be. I mean, you know, there's so much to factor in in neutral in this game. Input readings. Yeah. <laughs> I just gotta say, just be clean, I guess. Absolutely. Be clean and let the character's strength do the work for you. Full crash load. Oh yeah. We have actually seen some throw breaks, so... There's some conscious thought going on. And you know, clearly Top, top Pocket is plenty comfortable in this matchup right now. Yeah. It seems like he's got his offense going. He's doing what he wants to do. Looking for the 2-0 here. And he and that's it. Guys. Well, feel comfortable with your character, comfortable with your options, and let the money work for you. Don't work for your money in this game. Work smart. Work Yoshi's smarter, not harder, certainly. Probably the most Yoshi I've ever seen. It's Absolutely. Nice renaissance for the character. That was a very, I'd say, you know, first game was pretty close there, pretty competitive, but decisive 2-0 at the end of things with that, uh, that second game. We're led astray by seeing the how this bracket developed. Jun Kazama T. Oh yeah, sure. absolutely. <laughs> Maybe next time. I'm sure we'll see some Jun at some point today. Maybe. I'd be very surprised. Who does, uh, who does Sol Naciente play? You know, I, I believe King mainly, although I'm not Ooh. sure who he, well, Sol Naciente, I believe, is the name of one of the uh, Chaincraft extensions even, so right, yeah. seems like there's a bit of inspiration there. Um, I know he's dabbled a lot with Asuka before, okay. so I'm really curious to see how things are going in Tekken 8. Obviously, King, again, no stranger to those uh, yeah. 
top tier positions that people have been talking about early on here. The King players are awfully quiet recently. Oh they, yeah. They know how good they got it. There's nothing to complain about on their end. Yeah, that uh, is quite the character in this game. You know, thinking yeah. about those system changes, the throws, obviously. His game plan King is simpler. Okay. Yeah. All rounded character. Having a potent uh, throw game in Tekken 8 is just so critical. Not critical, but it, it certainly helps. We should be getting another game here shortly. Just, uh, you know. A lot of bodies in here. Early bracket. People making their way through. Early bracket. Got to process some of these DQs and see what's up. See who really came out to play. And who was merely walking away. <laughs> There's Tekken World Tour points on the line here for this dojo. It is. Uh, what is that, 50 points? It's. Uh, that's the old structure. Remember, I can't remember exactly uh, what the current structure is. So what I was seeing earlier when I was looking at the diagram starts at 16 plus to qualify for a dojo. Mm -hmm. And I believe it goes 16, 32, 48, 64, 96, I believe, is how the point distribution will add up. Obviously, the more players that you have in those brackets, the more points you can distribute. I think it's 100 for first place at a 96 plus. Ooh. And beings that were around 50 entrants here not too terribly sure where that puts us, but, you know, should be solid footing to start off with the Tekken World Tour here for whoever's able to walk away with the uh, the first place points and some of that prize pool. Honestly, bless Bamco for the dojo system. It brings oh, yeah. life into really small scenes, like it, like ours originally, you know. It gives you something to work you Give for. them a dojo event, people come. Yeah. Get your... You might see your name at the Tekken World Tour leaderboard. Yeah, absolutely. You I remember got 10 points. Your name's up there. Back in the day, even just having one point. It was cool. <laughs> it was like, hey, you know, I, I'm with it. Uh. I'm competing on here. And, you know, it's funny. I think it was 2018 or so. I don't know if it was intended, but I'm pretty sure you got a point just for attending certain just tournaments. Attending. Like a, a Master Plus event. Or it may not have been Master Plus by that point. Just Master. But it's certainly a beneficial system for the overall community. And knowing that Tekken is in such good hands with people that really want to make sure that the entire global community is represented. I mean, I can't remember exactly what all are the master events this year, but I know that they are continuing to develop that structure of making sure everyone is able to be in the running for the competition and everyone is able to uh, compete for the same prize that we all want, like being the strongest players in the world, uh, being able to compete with those big names at tournaments that, you know, someone like me, this dojo, practically in my backyard. I mean, it was only about a half hour away from me. Some people have master events, you know, in their regions, and just having all of those regions represented, it's so crucial. Beautiful keeping the thing. game alive, and not just alive, but making sure it thrives. It's a beautiful game. Absolutely. And we're gonna see a lot more of it here with a match coming up. We'll see who we've got coming up on stream. Got a, a Fang teaser on the button check. <laughs> and that's quite a character as well. See, back in the day, my hover character was Chloe. Oh, are, are we getting a bear? Are we getting bears? Might be. For those of you that don't know, Eclipse is our resident <laughs> bear player. Connoisseur. I, uh, and from June, as we were talking about. Going to indulge. I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes. Bears are in such an interesting place in this game. They feel I was, good. I was really not sold at the start seeing some of the nerfs to Lowe's. Yeah. I feel like it was definitely something to get used to not having the safe down back three. You know, down back two being pretty much always launch punch. Well, again, it'll depend on the matchup. Um, but having that at minus 15, just definitely something to get used to. But the more I play, the more I see this character has a lot of potential, and especially depending on how things go with the balance, there's a lot to be excited over. And we're getting into this here. Standard stuff off the balcony. And you know, this stage is really a good example of just how much they've like worked on the metagame, not just of characters, but having like so much going on with the stage interactables. You already saw the balcony break there. Sure did. This floor is looking primed and ready to break. 
I will gotta say, this is actually is my favorite stage in the game. Uh, oh yeah? I think the interactables are the most consistent here. Uh, the downstairs, all the way down in the basement, filled with gold. That's Those walls work well. It feels I, like... At least I feel like they work well. It could have been part of a stage itself. Yeah. And no, Uncle George, right here, looking to potentially make use of it. Shooting star. And there we go, getting that... Uh, you know, I think they've got wall blast and wall bound, I believe. And I think that one is considered a wall blast. Yeah, a lot of properties to learn in this Putting game. Putting it to use. Love seeing a bear come out swinging. Absolutely. That's what we always want And getting see. that bear twin pistons in there, really getting a commanding the wall. star here. Uh-uh. And you know, that, <laughs> that guaranteed down one plus two, the butt slam on the wall combo. Whose idea was that? Well, you know, I don't know if it was anybody's idea. It might just be, you know, you think it a could be part a of the system mechanics. Uh -huh. it, hey, I'm not calling it a bug. I'm not complaining. And I don't think Uncle George would be either with the start oh. that he's got in this game. That was a pretty good win. And, you know, this matchup will test you yeah. so much. This is actually a common scoreline in this matchup, too. You know, if you're unfamiliar against Bears, it is not uncommon to get swept yeah. for your first match. You're like, what happened to me? It'd be a little frustrating. I always tell people the first step is at least learning what the bear can do out of hunting stance. And we'll see what adaptations, excuse me, adaptations Dameron can make in this game, too. I mean, it's never over till it's over, especially in this game. Having the heat burst, even, and the heat engagers, you can build so much offense and just kind of steamroll rounds at times. All right, get into match two. I've never seen that conversation line. <laughs> you know, they they put a lot of emphasis on the character personality in this game, and it's just it's, it's reminiscent really nice of those see. old CVS two intros. You Absolutely. Know. And it's nice to see another strong start here, just continuing that pressure, I building on the momentum that you already have from a game one is just so critical in first the twos. The, the important part here is just retaliating. Absolutely. They, they know they got swept up in match one. But hey. Never over till it's over. It's and look at the health. 13 frames. Look at the health regain. Huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot to love with that heat smash. Incredible heat smash. Once she pops once she pops heat, you, just, you are a deer in the headlights just waiting for that. You don't want to move. Regardless, Panda still closes it up. Getting a lot of work from that DF1 stream. A lot of mileage. No, that's what I'm saying. We're seeing all these strings with June. There's a lot that you just got to get familiar with. It's the wall combo. No big deal. G mm, clef. And the G clef coming out. It's rare moment equalizer. I think it's a rare moment when you actually get the side split and not yeah. continue getting the combo in this game. Uh, yeah, that's one of the things that uh, I have noticed from the jump with this game that it's really hard to drop a combo at It's times. incredible. It's, you know. Mm. That's what they want us to do, we'll do it. Oh, and Can Can, so prevalent in this game, especially now that Can Cans aren't low parryable. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a hard read at times on both sides. It's kind of a crazy but hey, to make anyway. But. So is the Bear 4 4 1 plus 2 there. That big flip, ever Ooh. since it was introduced in Tekken 7, just been a, a pretty Close potent there. tool. And hey, putting those tools to use with a quick 2 0 from Business Uncle George. As usual. Who was our winner there? Uncle George. Uncle George. That is 2-0 over Dameron. We're still getting through round one of this bracket here, so stay tuned for plenty more matches where that came from. We may have Shadowfall 502 and Three Stars XO next, possibly. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Not, not promising anything, just seeing where the wind takes us. Yeah. There is so much Tekken to be played. That's the beauty. We just came here to watch some Tekken today. So, you know. Some Tekken to be played, money to be made. Points to be had. Player is going to be pretty glad. Here's Uncle George from. Excuse me while I find this out for regional information. The more information we have for this bracket, it just fuels stronger competition. Unknown. Now, I believe I've seen Uncle George in at least a few of the. I want to say Indiana related events, maybe. Towards well, this I had region. seen. Pretty sure that was the name I saw that uh, one of our resident gen players, Sleepy Justin, was facing at uh, one of the Hideaway Saloon brackets. Ooh, okay. I was watching that grand Kentucky. finals. I'm about 99% sure that was the grand finals that I had seen a few weeks ago. Justin was able to pull that out. We'll see, uh, you know, how.
how he's able to fare in this bracket today. I'm sure he's going to take a nice shot on himself. <laughs> Some other players that are here today. Uh, Lee Clutch. Oh, yeah. Maybe Indiana's strongest player. Going to see some Claudio, no doubt. Good guy. Great Claudio, Claudio player, excuse me. You know, as we're getting set, just looking at this bracket here, we've already got some of these matches. Round one is going along. Getting decided. I mean, we are, we're getting through it. Surprisingly, you know, not too terribly many DQs either. I'm always really glad to see just when a bracket is really full uh, not empty and people players. are showing up. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've seen some brackets where it's like, oh, you've got, you know, a few dozen people. No, maybe like half of that shows up. Rare occasion, of course, certainly not around here. Fairly well represented most often. It's a nice day today. Beautiful day outside, too. <laughs> Good day to uh, sit inside and play some Tekken. Sure is. If I wasn't here, I'd probably be doing the same at home. You know, be hanging out with my dog today. Yeah. And instead, you're here watching... A watching, bear. Watching <laughs> bears. Stream. Maybe we can get kangaroos at some point. You know, it would be really nice. I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, what kind of characters they put in that season pass. I mean, we saw in Tekken 7 that we had four seasons. They weren't all just characters, of course. I think yeah. it was season four that started to add a couple stages in there yeah, as well. Yeah, some network uh, uh, adjustments. Yeah, I mean, there was so much going for that game as it developed. I think it's the they exciting. put frame data in one of those season passes. <laughs> it wasn't all characters. Five dollars. But, you know, there's a lot of it. potential. There's this roster. So how do you feel about the roster right now? I feel like it's pretty solid as it is. I, objectively, it is solid, personally. I know. You know, I, I have my, I miss Bruce slash Josie. Both Gan of us. Yeah. Both of us are kind of miss missing Gan some Ryu. pieces there. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, some sumo gaming would there's, be nice, but there's hey. plenty enough to keep you held over. You know, yeah, you just got to put your pride aside. I had to do it myself, you know. Always had my characters before, but there's you know, room to grow the roster. Games. There's so many yeah. legacy characters that you know we saw eventually coming back in Tekken Seven. Some of them more potent than others. Everybody, you know, by the end of that game was pretty competitively viable. I mean, I think that game left off overall in a pretty solid state and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do to again we've talked about just balance changes that we already know are coming down the line with the uh, character uniqueness but hey, nothing more unique than new characters and we'll see who they bring back maybe get a few new faces in there I mean we got Leroy Lydia Bachmram Lydia coming back would be interesting yeah um, but even just really the uh say the courage to add brand new characters like that as DLC uh, Tekken game, it really showed that they were about the development of that game. They weren't just wanting to say, hey, you know, this is where Tekken 7 went, and now we're going to start building for the next game. They were committed to developing that roster, making sure that that was a, you know, ongoing game with those new characters that brought so much to the table, and there's so much room for them to do the same with Tekken 8. Now that we've got, you know, Tekken Shop and a Battle Pass, they're clearly doing different things to uh, get people really invested in the longevity of this game. You know, everyone wants to, you want to stand out, buy yourself a little customization yeah. item. Buy yourself a ball. You can feel about it how you want yeah. to, but it supports the game. Yeah. Uh, and when you look at what Tekken 7 became, it's hard to not still have some optimism there, you know? Absolutely. So many characters coming in. The screen will be filled. It'll probably look different in a couple more seasons. And you know, there's nothing more optimistic than a king player in season one of Tekken 8 right now. Oh. That's what we're getting. Oh. And, you know, you were talking about Lee earlier. I wish earlier. I could be so confident, you know? Yeah. You were talking about Lee earlier, though. I mean, slept on. He seems absolutely slept on. Plenty potent. If you know your frames, you can be a good Lee player. And this seems to be Phoebe versus the J Swaggin. Getting into it with that. This is our third game here. Still fairly early in this bracket. Missed the two break. And that's just, again, it's so critical in this game, having solid defense, not just through your block punishment, being aware for those throw breaks. Actually, that throw there is ducking too. It's it unbreakable, sure so. That's the mind game, uh, though, right? They want you to duck Yeah. Down. There's a, a lot to learn. Both players are kind of just feeling each other out, throwing some strings, oh. seeing what hits. And hey, all right. sometimes you don't got to think about the throw break. You just duck it. Yeah. I mean, look at that, you just win the round. Oh, 
wall explosion into the rage art. Cast oh, rage out on that. Let me think about the next round for a second. Oh. It's marvelous, marvelous that he says in this game. Not excellent. Step beyond. Oh, down three. That's it. That's that, a, that's that back three, three three. That's natural. Uh. New back three three string. That uh, well, not new string, but it's natural in this game. That it just races. adds to that offense that he has. I mean, one of the things that I had heard over the years from just you know different lead players throughout Perfect. Tekken Seven is, oh well, you know, his lows kind of different. Not, yeah. not Someone quite say what stinky. Build, yeah, not what you build pressure on. I yeah. never really saw a problem there. But hey, the back three three. It's so hard to deal with. Uh, Lee is very cool. Um, as usual, he will probably slide by. Not a lot of representation. You know, cool character. Oh, he is so elegant. When you're watching a Lee player on your screen, you're seeing those just frames. It's good stuff. It's always a treat. Dominant display going on. And this is just such a strong character for those players who really want to specialize in a character. Quick, Rio. Oh. You know, Lee's got places to be. He's a very important businessman. Absolutely. He's developing new tech. You saw the uh, combat grenade that he has oh, yeah. in that rage art. New tactics. Yeah. And at the you know character select, you saw that uh, new super suit that he has. Yeah. I don't, hey, it's right there. I, say, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about the suit, but at least we can still access his T7 outfit, which is great. Ever since we saw it, it's not too much of a fan. It's kind of grown on me, though. You know, it, just kinda, it kind of reminds me of that old T4 military outfits for oh, some yeah. like, I wasn't feeling all those. Some people have a lot this of King player is feeling it though. Yeah. Jay swagging. We're trying to get swagging in this first round. Gotta bring it back. Oh. And the heat burst. They'll stop you in your tracks in this game. Yeah, I mean, you, you can be stopping someone in this game. If they pop heat, you gotta slow down a little bit. Oh, yeah. Good. And you know, one of the things that I thought about is what if they didn't let you float off of it? So often, you might just get blown out of the air by one of those heat bursts. Clearly, it didn't matter in this first round. No. PB continuing this pressure. So tough. Man. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Mm. Ooh, one throw on the power crush. Yeah, unbreakable no. now. No. Whenever you see that screen freeze, unbreakable grabs uh, against armor and even as block punishes on armor, which I find really odd. Still not quite used to it myself, but hey, if you can utilize them the way PP just did, a lot of damage. He's playing clean. Ooh. Oh, that big I think that was, that was, I think that's a whiff punish. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, sometimes when you have that low heat smash, you just feel compelled to throw it out. But hey, if somebody whiffs in your face, perfect opportunity to go ahead and close out the round with it. You know, they they were already up a couple rounds anyway, so. Absolutely. All right, Kings get back in. Ooh. But that heat smash, Kings, heat smash is so much damage. It's one of those you kind of gotta little, stop and think. Little telegraph low, Kings coming back. Mm. Oh, oh. going to close it out here, that's maybe? It. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's way to zero. You don't drop those. Such an excellent showing from Lee. Some statement down four twos. Yeah. Very strong start to the bracket for Phoebe. Some decent execution there, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, again, that's what I was saying. It's always a treat to watch a good lead player just thriving with these tools. Definitely not the type of character you can just pick up and play quite as easily as some. I know that that was one of the things in Tekken 7 that between the three slide characters, between Law, Lee, and Shaheen, people would say, oh, well, Shaheen just sort of feels like an easier Lee at times. Yeah. They have done so much They're pretty to different keep these now. characters. Yeah different and apart in this game, Lee's slide doesn't even knock down anymore. Which is a very weird change to get used to. I believe it has kind of uh, ambiguous frames there on block, depending on you know the active frames of where you block it. But and, you know, that slide, it just engages his whole full crouch game going yeah. on there too. So. It sets him apart. It's, uh, what is it, plus three? I'm not too terribly sure, but he's plus in your face. Uh, and having that wall standing two, three, into the heat burst for the full combo off of that, I know a lot of Lee players were really liking what they were seeing from yeah. the start of the game. Something I've noticed in this game is a lot of like forced crouch mids that lead your own character into a full crouch game as well. So yeah. A lot Absolutely. of stuff to look out for. Dragonov, crouch dash four, 
He's right in your face, crouching right now. Yeah. They've nerfed the push back a little bit, uh, but it's still viable at the wall. Obviously, that's when you want to be doing it. You don't want to do that in open space. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I'm sure we're going to see a little bit of drag at some point here. I mean, Dragon yeah, I've seen a few. seen a few. Such a potent character. And, you know, at times, really feels easier than a lot of these characters on the roster. As no shade to you, of course. Someone I know playing that you play him quite a bit. Out of necessity, uh, definitely makes up for some weak points of my own. Person. Oh, yeah. I, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. Yeah, I mean, like that's I said. That's the other person's problem. Don't work for your money in this game. Let the money work for you. And exactly. It's, it's been the case for uh, some of these characters. Dragunov, certainly one of them. I would not say the same for Lee, but if you can get those just frames like we were seeing, it's cash money. It's all about what satisfies you most at the end Absolutely. of the day. Absolutely. Waiting for our next round. Yeah, I mean, as we look over there at uh, where they've got the Tekken set up. Is he people just up? waiting for their games. We're going to be getting, it seems like Subway Wang up here on stream. I mean, you know, early in the day for these brackets, it's always a little fluid. They might switch out, you know, certain matches for you know, different games that might seem a bit more uh, stream worthy, I suppose. I remember, you know, a couple times being at Evo and hearing, oh, well, yeah, you're up next on stream. Actually, no, we're going to run this match first. Uh, this one's going next. And, you know, and then it really you look depends. and it was me, and you're like, yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah. It really depends on uh, how the brackets are going, but looks like we've got at least one competitor stepping up here potentially. Going to get more tech and coming your way shortly. It's a good day, a lot of games being played around. Absolutely. I said it's to go back to it, it's really nice just seeing our scene grow. I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, when we first met, Discord, didn't even yeah. know we were in the same state together. Talking about arcade parts. I didn't even know that there were like local events in Kentucky until about 2019, maybe a couple years into uh, it. I personally chalked that up to me not doing my homework, and I'm certainly glad I did. Fair enough. And I'm certainly yeah. glad to see events like this being run by QCS. And that's just South Outlaws yeah. here in Louisville, Kentucky. You pick and choose what you can go to. Yeah. Very well represented here. Looks like we got Sleepy Justin coming up. We're gonna see some gin action up on stream. Our resident gin, Lexington gin. Let me see where uh, Justin's at. The bracket here, maybe stepping up against Little Pookie. I like that name. It's Little Pookie. And you never know quite what character you're gonna get in this game. We can rest assured we're gonna see some gin like we were talking about. Funny, well, anyway, it's just it's the protagonist, and I I hate to say oh, he's yeah. kind of cool in this game. I'd be feeling this way a lot about the Mishima family. Justin here doing his due diligence, checking for those uh, you know, he's making sure he wireless gets controllers. <laughs> Do not want to slip up in such an important bracket here to start the Tekken World Tour. Making sure you get that seat that you want. Oh, yeah. Preferred you know, that's, that's important, man. That's definitely something that, uh, you know, if you just play online, not quite as familiar as, oh, well, it. you know, of course, I'm going to, you know, go into this online tournament, lock in my character, lock in my one-piece side. When you come offline, better be ready for the rock, paper, scissors, or yeah, ready baby. to run to that uh, one-piece chair if you uh, feel so inclined. You know, one of my favorite things to do is I prefer 2P. Uh, oh, yeah? So it was kind of like a, a mind game within itself for some people. Uh, but my favorite thing to do was rock, paper, scissors with them for 1P anyway. And then just let them have it yeah. after I won the rock, paper, scissors. So, you know. It's another matter. layer of that mind game. <laughs> Get somebody thinking about something else yeah. before they you know, have if to you think want about one P, I want you to work for it first. Oh, yeah. Just waiting on Justin's opponent. So many competitors out There's here. There's a lot. A lot of I'm Smash, a lot of Street Fighter. Really looking forward to seeing how things can continue to grow again. Like, it feels like there were a, a number of people that I saw from earlier on in Tekken 7 in the scene that a couple of them really stuck with it and really continue to develop themselves. I wish that uh, one of our resident Raven players, Slide, was playing the game more. We miss I you, Slide. We need you out here, man. He was certainly improving at a, uh, a pretty solid rate. I mean, 
just, again, a testament to if you stick with the game, you get rewarded so heavily. And, and I think we're also definitely seeing that from Justin. He's been doing really well in a lot of these local tournaments. We were just talking the other day about, you know, labbing defensively, and it is so critical in this game. Run sure that is. offense, but know what you're doing on the defense. Be respectful, but not too respectful. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Never show you can never, too much uh, respect. You never be honest, as they say in fighting games. No, if you're it's honest, a game you get about, ran over. It's always, you know, no matter the fighting game, it's about kind of lying to your opponent about, oh, yeah, you saw this a couple rounds ago? Yeah, I've got a mix up in this string. I'm going to delay my timing. I'm going to pop a heat smash when you're trying to armor through something. It's all about a good poker face. And we'll see what kind of cards were dealt for our competitors next up on stream whenever we do get this game locked in. According to the bracket. Man. Could be Subway Wang stepping up here. I'm thinking it might be Subway. Around in the area. So let's see. I assume this would be round two. Yeah, we're getting yeah. into round two. Still waiting on a little pookie. Whittling things down. First steps. I'm seeing a lot of attacking to be played. Let's take a look at the bracket and see if any upsets have happened. We've got Hurricane's Fury. Old head king player. I think he's been playing since like Tekken 2. Huh. He used to work at the Namco arcade in Richmond, Kentucky. Wow. Way back whenever that back was. Back when there was a lot less character variety. Uh, king was probably a little more common. King is such cool character design. I wouldn't blame anybody for sticking with that character for so long. You know, everything's looking pretty standard uh, yeah. in, in the round two. I haven't seen yeah, any And if you're following upsets. along at home, you can pop on over to that Star GG page and follow the bracket yourself. See these players who are competing for the first Tekken World Tour dojo points in the region. Follow QCS on Twitter. Absolutely. Nice upstart tournament series. And you know, bless like I them, said bless earlier, them for picking up our scene, honestly. Certainly. You can follow along today's action with the hashtag QCS Outlaws, I believe. Pop over to that QCS Twitter and check it all out for yourself. We've got a number of games going on here. I see some Smash Ultimate over there, very well represented today. Feel to your strive up top on the mainstream. But hey, we know you're here for Tekken 8. Here we know that we've, it looks like we've got two competitors locked in. All right, Lil Pookie's here, I believe. I, assuming that the bracket was correct. Yeah, we got the tags right here. It seems like we're ready to go. Hopefully. They were here earlier, so probably a little bathroom break or something. Yeah, I mean, it's so important to be in the right headspace to compete in this game. Obviously, we've said it a couple times. Lock in has become sort of a, a running joke with this game, but you don't hey, want to hear serious. it. But it's true. It's very true. It's just as prominent as look at the screen. I mean, uh, you need to really be focused. Also, everybody, drink your game. water. Oh, yeah. Drink your water. You know, stay hydrated. Yeah. This game will drain the life out of you. When you're just sitting at home, getting in the ranked queue, at times it devolves into the salt queue. We've all been there. You need that water. Soak up that salt. It, you know, it freezes your brain a little bit. Oh, know? yeah. Nice reset. And again, you gotta lock in. Gamers don't drink enough water. I'm here to change them. All right, looks like Wolfuki is a king player. And you know, I think, at least I believe, Justin has played a king against Hurricane Fury. Yeah, yeah. Not so sure about Lil Pookie's familiarity with Jin, but hey, we'll see soon enough. Chris was our, 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 for one of our first gatekeepers battle. when I first used to host locals for Tekken 7. Oh, yeah? He won the first few. You know, everyone was trying to figure him out. I eventually figured him out. <laughs> uh, hey. But, uh, you know, he's round always one. playing this game. See what these two can figure out here in this first round. Getting going with some basic poking. You never want to shoot in that first no. round. But, hey, you can with that Zen up one. Flip. Ooh, we need to name good day after this. Just a flip, the maybe. Justin. And you know, he played mostly Akuma throughout Tekken 7. And so seeing him having another flip here might as well be his deep flip in this game. Honestly, to give him credit though, you know, he, he played Akuma, knew, knew that Akuma was, how do you say, controversial. Oh yeah. Uh, and you know, took, took starting over with a Peterless character. And going from 
one side of the spectrum to the other with such just a, what a lot of people thought was not exactly, you know, character playing Tekken. I mean, we were all, we were all fairly familiar with how Akuma felt to play and to fight in that game. And now going to such just a mostly pure Tekken character with Jin, just is thriving. And he's thriving with this 2-0 start. Let's see if he puts the break to this chain grab, though. Chain grabs are always yeah, such bad. a litmus test for if you know this match. For sure. A little Pookie battling back here in this third round. He does okay. not want to just roll over. A block flip. All right. Shining Wizard. Let's go to Oki with that forward three. It's good. Good close. It's, it's so interesting to see how many players Two more more. will utilize the more basic moves that he has. Flip. Honestly, he got lucky out of there. And getting some good damage here in this uh, fourth round to try to close out this game. Like even so if Justin you're doing looks prime for taking out one zero start to the set. Yeah, you know, even if you're doing things that might be a little crazy when responding to it. You just, oh yeah, you do it until until it's in this game. You win. Got up one. Such okay. a big risk, but high reward. The Zen up one rather with the the Justin flip. That's what yeah, and then you can see Justin sometimes likes to go for the down two after the flip. So oh, yeah. Things to keep in mind, whether Pookie Get remembered or not, we will see. Battle. And that down two, such a strong neutral for Jin. I'm, I think, you know, I speak for a lot of people when I say I was a little surprised to stay it, or to see it stay mostly as is from the network test. Yeah. Uh, kind of seems to be seeable if you are really locked in and ready for the matchup. Did he need it? Did he needs that Justin flip? Certainly Justin did to start off this round. Wall combo. Oh. Get some interesting step interactions. Absolutely. But hey, he got a battle through it. Blows out those rounds to get that damage, especially after the wall explosion. Round two. Fight. No, I think I think Pookie just needs one good round to get back in. We'll see if it's this one after a strong start from Justin getting into heat, not able to do much with it. Spent the heat. You gotta play second set. That giant swing just always gotta worry about it in neutral. It's always a threat. Classic. Oh, he went for the down throw. I don't think I've seen Justin duck enough to warrant that. Well, hey, you never know. Sometimes you just gotta have those hard reads. Yeah. Especially in this game. If I hit it, it was a read. Mm. If I didn't hit it, next. With that Zen up one, you got quite a read. Trying to close out the round. That should scale just fine. Yeah, it's business as usual here. I feel like we don't get as many of those ambiguous will it kill moments in this game anymore. I've seen a couple, for seen sure. Okay. I think at times, often, especially with the heat system, knowing that you can cash out. Oh! Oh, that's a key charge. Key charge. Got him some counter hits. Slash disrespect, maybe a little, uh, discomfort with the... It seemed like a player. I'm not too sure, but hey. Hey, Justin, Justin battled through it. He said, it hey, I can close this out. Disrespect me with a key charge, and I will go ahead and take you out. Just solid. Moves on into Very solid. I believe he moves on into round Yes, he does. Guys, we still have some other good names up here waiting for oh, yeah. their first match. For a little shine on the screen. I mean, we might be getting Subway Wang up here as we were talking about before. Cincinnati native. Known threat with the Leo and that character. You know, we were talking about it before. Leo feels like another character that is really built on the strengths from Tekken 7 and continuing to thrive in this game. I don't know quite how much Leo you fought, but. Decent bit, decent bit. With the down back two, hit confirming that into heat. Always gotta be watching for that. Uh, the back one four, as we had seen from Medic earlier, always a threat. The uh, the shoulder the shoulder charge, but it, not charge, but like the plow the Leo does. I don't remember the input, but it's got some new goofy things going on with that too. Plow, um, I'd have to see it for myself. It might be sure. that extension from the, the back one one plus two. Well, it could be. Right. Sure. Again, you gotta get shows. really familiar with the animations to really thrive in these matchups defensively. 
It is a brutal game, but it is a rewarding game. Oh yeah. And if you Tekken know. is by far the most rewarding fighting game that I have ever played to just stick with it and see how you can continue to develop those fundamentals. You know, if you're it's... someone from the region, you're like wanting to play, there's a scene out here. Yeah, if in. you're from the region, come out. Because we've got big events like this happening every once in a while. I know plenty of people that still sit at home, shy. Just get out here and play yeah. some games. And you know, no it's matter what, deal. you got to turn those L's into learning at some point. Might as well do it around, you know, either some familiar faces or new friends that you're making. Really glad to be seeing so many people showing out for these tournaments. Getting Subway Wang here against who's that? Is he in the Natural bracket? Rhythmic. Natural Rhythmic. Hey, that is another name I saw in some of the Tekken Seven brackets. Uh, I think Miguel is the. I'm pretty sure Miguel, is the character I was seeing from Natural Rhythmic. Miss Miguel, we need him back too. Do we need or do you want? Because I know that character would fit right at home with the aggression, but yeah, at I times. Just want to back for someone. <laughs> At times, I think about some of the characters that they could add into this game, and I'm kind of good with the roster as is. Marduk's come. I'm, I'm looking forward to Marduk's come. what we get. It's just always new stuff to learn. You know, I was talking to you about how much Eddie I've been labbing defensively, and there's there's just so much. Good. We don't even Again. have play yet. I don't even say huh. that. You're Do you want about that? How much you labbing you're doing? Just wait. Oh. Just wait. Hey, you know how it is. I'm gonna let you take the notes. I will absorb like a sponge. You say notes, that's going to end up being a whole encyclopedia of what you need for that character. Always is. But hey, that's why we play Tekken. To learn and improve. Seeing some Steve from Natural Wing. Shao Yu. Wing Shao Yu from Subway Wing. Subway Wing Shao Yu. I've played his Shao Yu before. Really? I, uh, I don't know quite how much he's been developing. Shao Yu as a side character in this game. I know he's certainly one that every once in a while will work on those side characters just for the sake of knowing more about the game overall. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do with this character. Kind of be an offbeat from the usual Leo, like we were saying. But hey, sometimes she's strong. Whether it's yeah, whether it's the matchup or just the character strength, Steve, you might find something that works for you. Natural rhythmic. Currently finding something in his heart. Big hits. All right. And you know, gonna get a you think about stuff like the Sonic Fang. We had seen that with the Heat Engager. Those moves, even after you don't have Heat, I think Steve is a great example of. They're still clearly strong tools that a character has. Be it Sonic Fang, be it that new Lionheart 1 that he has. Still safe mid uh, Heat Engager, of course. Give Steve Lionheart. players some time, you know. He'll figure things out. Absolutely. Just like Subway Wang trying to figure out this matchup right now. So, dealing with it. Really, uh, I'd say aggressive Steve at times feels a bit unorthodox. At yeah. least depending on you know, how you watch the character scale on the like talent tiers. You'll see so many just defensive wall Steve players at like the top level. And as you see people develop their game. It's always really interesting to see how people just apply those tools differently. Natural Rhythmic really hit Rhythmic here with pressure. And it's the name of the game. Yeah, I know you gotta find ways to respond. Create your own problems. Good interrupt them. there. I think both are still a little passive, even though it's like big buttons didn't hit before. Big button right there with all the moments. Gets clipped by one of the hits of that heat two. smash, and that's you know that's one thing that you really have to uh, adjust to both you know, defensively and as a player. Of if just you know one hit of a heat smash lands, it can change the property. I don't think that was quite the case there, but it's certainly something that to adjust to. Subway Wang making those hits, still holding on to the heat. Hard to get back into this. You gotta be careful with him with this. So once she gets it back one, that back one is still always so close to the And if you get back one, you see where Subway had to battle back a bit. He's doing pretty well. He's trying to get this matchup going his way, but natural rhythmic. Really wants to even up the score here in this game one. Subway went close 
that out on the game one. We're, uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm, Subway's not gonna doing see anything insane. He's just playing clean and tight, shall you? We're gonna see some adjustments being made uh, in the rematch. I, uh, I don't know quite how much they've been. The rematch on the uh, mainstream. I actually haven't been watching that. Uh, Knowing yeah, that we're in uh, Tekken World Tour rules, but. But hey, yeah, that we'll one's see. gonna be that's gonna be hard to enforce. We'll see what defensive adjustments we made from each side. Early Natural heat rhythmic, I think may have been seeing hey, this pressure time about before. It was key. That was what got that one round in game one. Starting off strong in game two. Forcing Subway weighing on the back foot early here. I think Rhythmic definitely wants Subway to swing. Curious little interaction there. You know, it gets too deep. It gets too deep here sometimes. Oh yeah. He must have heard me when I say he wasn't being crazy. Looking pretty ready for some of this pressure, but I like turn that into damage where you can. Round three. I don't even think I've seen this link custom. I had seen this early on, and I was like, that's what's gonna get me to play Link. It definitely was. I'm not touching this character. But she's very strong in this game. And again, just aesthetically, they are doing so well with Tekken 8. Making it to the wall. And retaining that. One more mix. He didn't spend it. Oh. Eats the full rage art. And you know, that's clearly not gonna even things up, but getting a little bit of health back to the, uh, the rage art here. Yeah, that's a down forward one poke you can use. Maybe two? Oh, doesn't even mix in the Lionheart move. Does the throw there? That was interesting. Telegraph flow. Uh, Subway. Another chance of life here. Definitely trying to slow it down. Mm. Bringing it back. Staring into the face of a Steve after heat smash on block at the wall like that. And saying, hey, I'm going to play patient. Going to battle this back. It's almost like the health deficit didn't quite matter as much there. It certainly certainly does. certainly plays a factor, but we're seeing a lot of offense here in this round as Natural Rhythmic knows. Max against the wall. He's he's up against that loser's bracket. If he doesn't close out another round against Subway. He's trying. He's got the life. He's gotta keep him out the corner. Well, and you're always curious in this game to see when the heat is going to come into play. Whether it's somebody heat bursting, just getting in there and starting their offense with that. Or if they're trying to uh, land those heat engagements. Like the running two that we've been seeing so much. Some Cali roll breaks going on. To the wall. A lot of damage in a really good spot. Now the rhythm says, I don't care. You gotta get back into this. Again, even if you don't have the heat, those heat engage moves are still plenty strong. Get some Oki off of it. Close out a uh, 2 0 here for Subway Wang. Moving on. Moves on to round three. Round three already? I think he does. Wow. Yeah, he moves on to round three. Let's make Will is still in it though. You know, he's going to go down into the losers bracket. Oh, yeah. Which Absolutely. is looking. A little spooky down there. Oh yeah, I'm sure it's infested. I mean, these brackets, like we were saying, so many people that we're familiar with the names, we know what they're capable of. Just looking forward to seeing how that actually plays out. I'm excited because as we get closer to round three, we're gonna keep seeing these top players come through. Oh yeah, absolutely. The further you go in a bracket, obviously the tougher the competition gets, the more exciting it gets to watch, just seeing those Defensive options coming into play, seeing how people's matchup knowledge obviously tested, but even once you get to that, like later in a bracket, you know that their defense is often fundamentally sound. They had to do something right to get there, and then seeing how just time comes into play, and how, changing your timings to throw off your opponents, try to get those counter hit tools, trying to waste your opponent's heat. With natural rhythmic in there, you're getting back one by Steve. That could turn a whole round around. So we get our next game up here with
Cobb, and I'm not too sure other player is. Cobb, an Ohio player who um, okay. plays a number of different characters. I know, I know I fought as Ajusena at uh, the last Cincy Clash tournament. That character is a menace. But hey, he's also played a lot of Jin before. I believe that's kind of his legacy main. Okay. Fair amount of June. See what we get here. Perhaps. Did you see the, uh, the name for our other player here? The King? Not too familiar, I don't believe. But hey, there's always room for upsets. There's always room for people to continue growing their names and their legacy in this game. It's so early on. We'll see what we have in store here. Oh, it's prayer hand emoji. I've heard that name. Leading me astray, Danny. I was looking at his round Leading one. Leading me astray. That is my bad. Getting prayer hand emoji round here one. with the Nina. Prayer hand emoji. Fight. Interesting. Another. Whoa! Oh, Hot start. start. Wow. Wow. All right. But you know that is one thing you have to consider. If it's a start, strategy. If you start the round with whether it's heat burst, heat engager, what have you, then time is ticking on that. You gotta really be able to cash out. Have a game plan for what you're working with. So far, it seems like Cobb is trying to battle back. You know, you just gotta weather the storm that against heat. me. That's what it's all about. Take your chances. Oh, we're in a one poke situation here. Oh, I was wrong. I think Cobb did so well there with seeing uh, the immediate pressure two. from Nina and Heat. Saying, hey, start of the round. No big deal. We can battle back. Yeah, and you know. If someone's gonna pop their heat at pretty early on, like we say in here, uh, it's all about the usage, right? So Absolutely. You, you know, nothing with it. It feels pretty bad to lose your heat. The way I see it, you have three resources in Tekken. Sometimes, maybe four, between health, time, and now heat. Some characters obviously have other stuff. You really got pain. I mean, different things. And we're seeing Cobb really work those factors in his favor here with quick. Zero start this game one. I expected a Vazasena. Oh honestly. yeah. Honestly. Really strong character. Pretty easy to pick up. That down back for us. Good pose. So now I'm not too sure if it uh, high crushes as well, but at least some sort of evasive. If it if it does, it reminds me of uh, the Josie full crouch stem. I can see that. Uh, kind of reminds me of that. You know, I was hearing a lot of people compare it to uh, Josie down four. Mm, Not the just the full crouch low. Simple. I was saying it does have a full crouch low of her own. You can see a plus little, one, a little bit of the roots. Josie, ultimately brand new character. And hey, great hand emoji saying, I want none of it. I don't want to see any of that offense. I'm gonna try to close out the second round here and get it even up. Yeah, I think prayer hands uh, approach here is just I'm gonna run, I'm gonna do my thing before she does her thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they're slugging back and forth here. Not seeing a lot of running three two anymore from Isaiah. Mm. Uh, they've, they've touched the move. It's okay. Everyone's Always in the back though. outside. Final and you know, they're uh, balancing it again on, I believe, Monday. Yeah, we have so no many, idea what they're doing to it. Well, so many people have seen, even if she whiffs that first hit, second hit won't come out. No. Yeah. She flies so far away if you sidestep against it that it's like, I can't do anything against this either way. Yeah, I definitely feel like if this were a couple weeks ago, you would have already seen a few. I think we've had a single running Yeah, game. but you know, Cobb is making the tools work for him. Doesn't need, need it. Close to that. First game. You win. <laughs> I love that win screen. I mean, I, I've seen you know, a number of different places where they've got the, uh, it's kind of mimicking athletes where they're yeah. right on the camera. The this character, battle. she needs a baseball card. She's obviously not my favorite to fight. She has so much charisma and character in her. She's got. She brings her own annoyance before you even oh, actually yeah. deal with the kit itself. Fight. You know, some people are into it though. Mm. In the match two. And that DF one screen. So cool. It's already bad enough that the, uh, the first two hits jail. So if you know it's coming, you just gotta hold that. And then you might be just looking in the eyes for all this pressure. Mm. And what a commanding start. Oh, yeah, he got that second splat, I knew it was over. All right. Again, you just gotta establish your own thing against us. Absolutely. Straight ahead emoji trying, but he's trying. 
slug his way back into this round. Into and this game, rather. It's a viable approach in this game, you know. If you're unsure, just fight anyway. Yeah. these players we're seeing a lot of buttons here a lot of back and forth in some of these rounds heat still available on both sides there we go i never know quite what pressure you're gonna have to do it smashed after the heat burst and that heat smash is just so prominent it's one of them that uh i believe it has low crushing frames in there it's it's good uh, i've seen it i don't know how fast it is but it's pretty fast. I think it might be 14. I've seen it beat uh, some Rage Arts where they'll pop the, the first hit huh. and just flies over it. You know, we, we haven't even seen any orbital usage. You know? There's so much to keep in mind with us. So much to keep in mind with Nina. Even. I mean, it's true. Were, Very true. If I were facing this character right now, man, just the pressure queen herself in a game that is so built for her. Gotta that's make those tools work. That's gonna be game two. Cobb closing it out, showing that he is uh, quite comfortable with that new character moving on in this bracket with Azucena. And you know, I don't blame him. Again, strong character. Play what's good, Strong guys. player. Making it work. Obviously, play what makes you happy, but play what's good. Too. Yeah. And hey, a strong character can make someone plenty happy. He's walking away plenty satisfied with that one. We got coming up next. We're getting some good games now. If we're lucky, we might get to see Sol Naciente play uh, his round two match. I mean, so many of these matches that we've seen, even if the results are two zeros, there are ones that certainly some people could say it was close though. Some of those yeah, rounds, there, there was plenty there's, competitive. There's been a couple. I mean, the back and forth in this game, like I said. A round is never over until it's over. There's still so much to work with those resources. I mean, health being such a variable resource in this game compared to before, like, we haven't seen the health, like, be, I guess you could say variable like that since tag two when you could tag out, get a little bit of health back. And now that you basically, you have to fight back for your health <laughs> to come back. If you are hitting someone, you are regaining health most of the time as long as you've got that gray health. And it's just so interesting to see how these competitors are trying to sway that uh, in their favor to try to bow back into these rounds. You definitely want to press those buttons. Certainly. If you lose a round and you didn't press anything, you got some studies. In there. One thing that I've realized, if you get through a round, if you lose the round and still have your heat, you got to yeah, make sin. some adjustments that's, going that's forward. That's a new sin. Uh, like the fabled... Dying with a stick of butter. Oh, yeah. You don't want to do it. You know, I remember watching in Tekken 7. It was always just so gratifying to see somebody beat a 2D character that had those resources for themselves. Yeah, seeing geese go down with not be able to use them. everything. Mm, good riddance. It's a vindicating feeling yeah. of, oh, we did not have to deal with that. It was pure Tekken. You know, and, you know, geese gets to walk away from that pretty unscathed. That, Everyone still talks about Akuma from Seven over, yeah. over Geese, but man, Geese was a menace in his own right. Absolute menace. But then again, so many characters were in that game. Two Ds alone, obviously, they were pretty prominent, depending on just the different eras of that game. Like we saw the rise of Akuma, and then you know at times they they made some balance adjustments. Geese especially got hit over time, but. We saw those competitors make the characters work, and we are seeing the same now with some of these newcomers, be it Reyna or Azusena, as we just saw from Cobb. Haven't seen any Victor yet. No Victors. I, uh, how do you feel about that character? He's okay, I guess. Uh, yeah. Wondering when they're going to give him a spear. Maybe that'll be a new tactic that he gets later on. I, uh, I don't think I missed Noctis forward one plus two quite Down that back much. two. Uh, maybe he'll get a spear. Well, we'll never know. Got two more competitors coming up here. We'll see what uh, kind of characters we get. Maybe we do see a Victor. I know, you know, we were talking about Fusion being here. He's been playing a lot of Victor as well. Yeah, that really blows my mind. Uh, I haven't kept up with Fusion throughout the years, but when I knew him as a Chloe player, that's definitely what he was playing. Long for the time. time.
but like most of us, character doesn't make it into the next one, you gotta pick up new things. You adapt, and a competitor like Fusion, he adapts you know, fairly well. We were just talking about it earlier, he was uh, at least in the top eight, I can't remember exactly where he finished last night in the Iron Man weekly that Max Ninja runs. And he was playing, I believe, Azusena and some Eddie in that. Such a strong competitor. Yeah, kid's talented. Yeah. I met him when he was an actual child. <laughs> he beat me, then went on to beat Poke Chop and make top eight at a KIT 2019. And those tournaments, Miss I'm KIT. sure, were always just bound to be stacked. I went to one, mm -hmm. and that was that was tough. That was uh, that was like my real first like. I want to say stomping grounds. But yeah. Like my origin story as a competitor was going to Kent. Oh, yeah. Uh, with some of our locals around here. Stack up in the car. <laughs> go stay at the Marriott where Kent was. And you know, that's why I'm so glad that we've got these QCS tournaments happening, especially with Mid South Outlaws here today. For sure. Um, again, if you're at home, just staying tuned with things on social media, be sure to watch for that hashtag QCS Outlaws and follow all the action. So we're getting through this. Uh, Day one of the Tekken World Tour. We've got Uncle George back up here, I believe. We've got a Jin and Panda matchup. And, uh, this is JVO, I believe. I, yeah, uh, you're right. It's JVO. It's funny. I was actually watching the, uh, I believe Atlanta. He's somewhere in Georgia. I believe Atlanta. Steve Player 0 and 2 playing ranked last night. Ran into JVO, and I was like, hey, might see him on stream tomorrow. We're gonna see how this bracket uh, plays out with so many competitors. I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Both. Both players are really cautious at the moment. Okay. Letting it rip, though. Oh. Bear Jordan. And you know, it might just be a little biased, me seeing that so frequently, but it's always funny to see when the forward forward one plus two, the Bear Jordan, jumps over a mid like that. Oh, I, I'm fine. It can be it. really deflating to be on the uh, receiving end of it. Yeah, you know, you, you do a down forward one, you think you're going to clip them out of the air. No. Mm -hmm. You were not allowed to do that. You know, everybody likes to uh, go back to Akuma jumping in mids, and now in this game, sometimes we have Kuma jumping mids. Getting the action started with that DF1 string, which is actually kind of a big risk against Jin, having that 14 frame wall staying too, uh, being able to launch that against two, Bears. 2 1 4 in the 4 4 2. Jin and, Jin and Butter, we'll call it, I guess. And Uncle George saying, I'm not scared of any of that uh, no. block punishment. I'm just going to get my pressure going here. How do you feel about Jin 442? Oh, it's, it's menacing. This is, this I mean, is that's, a, that's the me, one I complain about the most. To me, one of the, the strongest heat engagements in the game. I, I imagine that, you know, you just look at it and the whole screen is just green. Yeah. <laughs> if you turn on the hitbox viewer for Jin 442. It doesn't matter because Uncle George closes out. What a fast one. game one. We're sitting here, we're watching this bear action. It's like, whoa. Game one already went by, and Uncle oh. George trying to stomp his way through this bracket. A lot of bear representation. Yeah. Today. And it's, it's great. <laughs> it's great for me, trust me. I, uh, I'm a fan of bears. <laughs> I know a lot of people would say otherwise. It's refreshing to see that character variety. As we've been talking about early on in this game, see people exploring different options. Especially when really you think. their footing. Oh, what a trade. I had no idea that was possible off the, uh, I believe that was counter hit standing four. Guaranteed wall here. The can -cans. All right, 75% wow. of his health gone. But it's this game, mm. doesn't matter. You eat a bear stance throw, now pressure you're resets. Away from the wall now. And both with the heat, JVO getting into it. I want to see, I want to see some G clefs from Uncle George here at some point. It's always got to be that calculated risk. Mm -hmm. All right, JVO with round one. Still in there. It hasn't been dominant, I would say. Mm -hmm. I mean, that game one, it went four, four, real two quick. Chicks. Right, missed the hop kick, gets down 4 2 1 launched. Mm. And being at the wall against any character in this game, just such a big threat. What a carry on that. I had never thought about that. Just, you know, might not even have to worry about blocking the third hit. If you could just parry it, get higher reward. This is looking like a standard gin round mm -hmm. at the moment. J 
JVO not going down without a fight here. Play safe, play cool. Use your mids. Oh, you hit the full stack. charge moves. Yeah. That's definitely something to get used to in this game. JVO sure looking at it <laughs> saying, he's going to play patient. I'm sure he's happy to close the round. Absolutely. Still just sitting here about other. even. I feel like JVO really wanted to land one of those demon paws, get into heat, really turn on the pressure so you don't get carried to the wall. Have to deal with a bear at the wall. Yeah, I want I want JVO to get this so we get around a, uh, a game three. Oh get yeah, a lot That's of two O's. Right. Bush gets the round. No one's doing anything crazy at the round start. I feel like they fairly do they know each other. <laughs> Not too sure. Not too sure. Oh, see what we were saying about the risk award there on the G clef. You always got to calculate where you want to throw that out. Being launch punishable, I mean, you can get yourself into a really bad spot here. Oh. Mm. And that uh, That's, that okay. little overhead kick that Jin has, I think it's his DF33. Don't quote me on that, of course. I am not a Jin player. I it will work out okay. plenty well there for JVO to close out that game, too. We're getting to a uh, third game here. Seems relatively uncommon today uh, with today uh, a lot of these two sure. O's. But we're going to see kinda... where this takes us to Elegant Palace. One of my favorite stages. It's a good, it's a good stage. Absolutely. Th this and the uh, the French boat one, Victor's stage. I would call the it. Celebration on the sand. Yeah, that one's great. I will say, uh, at least some of the thematic things of the stages in this game are a better approach than seven. Where For sure. Yeah. I mean, there's not nearly as many just volcanoes that we're constantly <laughs> seeing. Volcanoes, marketplaces. Uh, what else? Both of them just still assault lake. G trying to feel out the neutral here. Land those G-Clefs, calculate that risk reward. There it is, my favorite, 442. And you can tell JVO isn't quite wanting to just take big risks on things. Just checking with that FF3, getting this wall here. No and this is one of the hard wall breaks in the game, taking two hits. I, uh, I don't think it got one in there. No. no. So that wall is uh, not quite primed and ready to break. But it's actually really interesting to think about um, I think of these two, just Jin's Heat Smash would do it, that the Heat Smash hits a hard wall break like that, it'll automatically, excuse me, automatically break the wall as we're seeing there. It's gonna be big reward. Break, maybe? Oh. Absolutely, I mean, it's it's such a, a small little area there. In and you the know, bears big bodies. Of Elegant Palace, oh yeah. The big bodies don't mm. help. Great Oki there. That's a nice wake up situation. JVO's looking at winning the match here. You can tell he wants it. Oh, yeah. You can tell he is trying to play He's playing fairly tight, reserved. Though. Yeah. Not too terribly sure about his. That may have been the first forward four I've seen. Fair knowledge here. But he's saying, hey, if a bear is staring me in the face, I'm not afraid to poke that bear. Got to poke the bear. That was such a good walk. The timing didn't quite work out for that heat smash, but still in it. Oh, hunting bear. Throw. And the unbreakable grab. Always a threat. Mm. All right, still in it. And you know, it's actually it's pretty interesting. That's not a uh, uh, frame trap in this game, knowing that the down back two is now, really? I believe, minus one on normal hit. Before, if people didn't know much about this matchup and were just trying to press into down back two on hit, they get hit by that wall standing four all day. Yeah, it's like a dragon of down yeah. two situation. There might be a little bit of a lack of the knowledge about the matchup in this game. Not too sure, but hey. It gets the heat burst stuffed. JVO's done well enough to battle at this point. And we'll see what oh, Uncle George can do to try to get this going back in his favor. Oh, didn't take him to the wall. He might regret that. Mm. He's there now. Keep his Chance circle. at life. Ooh. Final Chance to round. keep this going to a final, final round. Match point. The full string. Mm. And tries the bear flop on the ground. Doesn't quite work out. Got to dig deep Ten here. Ten seconds. Look at the life. Hey, if you can get those back uh. four twos to work for you, that could have certainly helped. Just building on that oh, pressure with the bear lunch. twin pistons. And Uncle George said, I am not out of this. 
That's where the bear wants to be. Have them at the wall. Oh, he pressed. Oh. Uncle George takes it. And what a way to close it out on that charge. He's got move. himself a fan base behind him. Uncle George going to be moving on in this bracket. Are these two Kentucky lads? Not too sure. Not too sure that one. I think like Uncle George might be. I believe I've seen Uncle George in some of the at least hideaway saloon brackets. Oh, it was a good match. Pretty solid showing. I got oh, the Uncle George closing that out with the dominance at the wall there. And it looks like we might be getting Subway Wang back up on the stream here. Yeah, we're starting to have people crowd around the stream set up, so things are starting to get real. This looks like it might be Subway Wang versus Cobb. It is. Both stepping up there. Both Ohio boys. Unfortunate Ohio team kill a little early on, but it's still a winner's side, so neither one's out. To be fair, I know that uh, Subway Cincinnati and uh, Cobb being Columbus, I believe, quite a bit of distance there between yeah. them. But I know Cobb is well-traveled for not just this game, Tekken 7 as well. Go okay. to a lot of events in the area. Yeah, that's kind of like the thing about our region, right? Kentucky mm -hmm. is such a poorly designed state on the roads that we all just kind of claim each other even if we are from different cities. <laughs> right. You'll have a guy come out four hours from Eastern Kentucky to come to this tournament. So, yeah. yeah. You know. Just play some Tekken. Yeah. And like we were saying, people are devoted to the grind for this game, especially having a brand new game with Tekken 8 here. Start the Tekken World Tour. We're going to see the lane pick again from Subway? Or is he just going to go straight you know, into the You know, with layout? the fact that Cobb Definitely tries to get out to all those events. Uh, they may have played at least yeah. a handful of times in this game so far, so I feel a bit comfortable depending on the character choice. I want to throw in a curveball there, just try out a secondary. You can play character. with your game one, you or know? yeah, you can just stick to your probably main, not the best thing to, your guns. to say. But and it it's looks like day. we're getting the tried and true buffs. Yeah. Respect. And again, both of these characters just so capable in this game. We should be in for a really good match here. Could be some really look forward to it. Really painful combos coming. And you know, we were talking about the resources. Leo Lightning Player. It feels like they really did a good job with making that character feel more unique in the fact that Leo was discussing something at the stage select. We got something going on, but getting into it here on the Urban Square. Uh, Leo Lightning Glare, not just having that set to the like you know the key charge extension, yeah. but rather having an entire resource of it. That's another thing that you have to worry about in this matchup. Get underway. Where does him start small? I'm sure. Oh yeah, you never want to give your opponent too much information in that first round. Seeing a lot of those down back fours coming out. You know, at a higher level. You got those angles. You gotta do the lows and start some of the pressure. Woo! First running 3-2 I've seen of the day. He gets that down back too from Leo, and there's the hit confirm. You know what that looks like? What, Dan 3? It looks just like bit. Dan 3. I, can see that. I, can uh, see that. I don't think it's as good, but it looks like it. It's a little bit like a uh, strong start here for Subway Wang. That round was definitely looking in top of favor until it wasn't. And there's that running 3-2. Gonna be seeing a lot of that at Evo Japan, I feel. Everyone's at all things considered, they're keeping pretty social. Oh, yeah. And I was just saying, uh, it's such a good character for space. One thing, like that. You don't have to do a lot to make this character work for you. This dance makes sense. And especially in heat with this character, we can get a little bit more creative with it. I was just saying, it's Liberty the Door Stance. It has so many options in there. They're just a constant threat. Subway Wang looking at that Damn threat and saying, cool. I do not care. Leo's a character that's kind of difficult to play at a higher level, at least traditionally, you know, once you get past the back one four mixes. I can see that. I, uh, I'm glad to see be a Subway well really player. getting comfortable in this match with his options. He's trying to fight this Octane, a gloomy threat from so many of these just potent tools. From the wall pressure. Really looking like. Close this out for the 
game one. Strong showing so far. No boy went. Okay. Business is you. But hey, you can't count out Cobb. Absolutely not. The odds of Sena. Such a strong character. There's there's so much to be Get said about this character. So much that she's capable of with the aggression. We're gonna see how he changes things up going into this game too. Excitement elsewhere in the game. None of that oh, matters. Place is electric Don't today. listen to them. Listen to this. Place is plenty electric, and it's gonna be getting even rowdier as we get through this bracket. Without the combo, but you know, it's K and K cancels. Sometimes they'll, they'll challenge their, their execution. Both in heat right now. Who's gonna pop? It's always such a looming threat. It is from both sides. Because <laughs> you're just looking at each other. Especially a character like Leo, I believe having two heat matches. I believe one from K and K with the low, and also for some reason I'm blanking on it. On that standing heat smash, we may have seen it a moment ago. Certainly something we may see again throughout the day with these Leo players. Cops is really trying to slow everything down. And I can't blame him. Oh, no, absolutely. In this game, you really just need to be able to control that tempo of the offense. And that Libertador stand is working for you. Try to get some of that. Health back on your side. Subway takes it in anyway. You know, that's what I'm saying. With the lightning glare extension, sometimes that might be all you need to close out a round. Definitely a, kind of an enigmatic area. Oh, yeah. You know, just like we had seen earlier with the Lee wall standing 2 3, being able to pick off, off that up forward 2 1, I believe it is, from Leo with the heat burst opens up so much opportunity. What you can do is really maximize the damage of these characters. Perfect. Exactly what Subway Wang is doing right now. Yeah, and you see. Retaliation death for two, you know? Cobb taking that risk there. Slowing up the PF2. Small attack. Look for it, just let it rip. Didn't quite get anything off of it. Hey, Subway Wang has a round to play with here. Take some risks if necessary. Feel it out. Just gotta, just gotta keep it tight. So that players was a still have heat. Close chance for a float on the run for three. Fairly rare occasion. Still on the string. Final round. Fight. Final round finished. Uh, looking to get on the board. That strong punishment, knowing exactly what Subway Wang is seeing on the screen, knowing how to uh, make Cobb pay for just throwing out the F2 uppercut there, really needing to earn this damage. You know, they're both yeah, I'd like to see throwing out the pose here. Ones, you know? No heat yet. This can change in an instant going either way. Everyone just wants their one big thing. Oh. And that might be it for Subway Wang. Or Heat Dash. Let's see if he's able to close this out. That's an edge too. Cop Still in it. Certainly. Unfortunately going to losers, but that's the game. And you know, with any tournament, you're able to see some really strong loser side runs. I would not be surprised at all if we see Cobb up, you know, a couple more times here. Because even just going through that loose side, you always still have a chance. Let's see who we got coming up Seems next. Seems like we've got a couple competitors checking the brackets over here. Some serious Looking gamers. for their route for those uh, Tech World Tour Dojo points. Take a look at our bracket. And I believe this is BB stepping back up, the lead player we had seen earlier. Right. 
had the acid rain combo. Oh yeah. And it's also really nice with that character that they added the little blue spark on each of mm -hmm. the... The blue sparks are a nice touch yeah, to the game. Yeah, on the just frames. Kind of gives everyone something to be a little prideful about. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, I got those. Drag's got the full crouch down forward yeah. one, four blue spark and the whether running it's, two. Whether it's Lee, you know, they they even gave blue sparks to Bears roll one. Did they? Uh, huh. It's only in heat, though, and you don't have to do anything, you know, special with your execution for it. But it's always nice to see so those little things that set certain moves aside from, like, hey, I grinded out the uh, execution for hitting this acid rain or with the Dragonov running too. Yeah. With the blue sparks. Get a little extra really damage for your troubles. It's gratifying. Yeah. Different sound effect. It's the little things, honestly, that make those additions so cool. Let me check the bracket, but it looks like we may be getting... Maybe getting Britty Spears. Britty Spears Phoebe. versus Phoebe, yes. Britty is a long-time uh, Kentucky Tekken player. Currently playing Elisa. Yeah. Was playing a lot of Marduk. And yeah, giving people a lot of problems yeah. with the tackles in Tekken 7. We'll see what he's bringing to the table here in Tekken 8. Yeah, he's always had Elisa as a pocket character. Um, big fan of both. I think he played them as a team in Tag 2. I don't know what the synergy was like on that. but That sounds like quite a team. Uh, and you know, Elisa in this game, him thinking about what characters can do in Heat and that pressure, the chip damage on Chainsaws yeah. is so just prominent. You have to respect the destruction A lot. chance. <laughs> you, gotta, yeah. you just let her do her thing. And it's like before, you'd say, okay, I'll just stand here and block. She's doing damage. Yeah. In heat, in destruction stance, with those chainsaws. You so have to do something. If you were going to do nothing to me, I will chip your life away. You gotta mash or move. Yeah. Take your pick. You know, some people would call that uh, you know, calculated aggression. <laughs> some sort of aggression. Uh, I'll tell you that. A bar, a, if you will. Yeah. Pretty's known as a pretty unorthodox player sometimes, at least to some. He can definitely frustrate some people. Regionally sometimes and that's the online. name of the game. Oh, yeah. It's frustrating people. Yeah. In I think it. I think it's. It feels more prominent in this game. Uh, the mental games that annoy you. The mental game is so crucial. Yeah. Not just knowing what's happening on screen, but seeing how your opponent may be trying to mess with you with the different options that they have at their Get disposal. The and everything battle. in this game is just so meticulously crafted to have certain strengths and weaknesses, for that matter, of these characters. We'll see what both of these competitors are able to do. Underway here. Fun matchup. And again. A lot of that. A lot of their poking. Getting keep going here on the easy side. You know, if someone else pops theirs, you gotta pop yours, man. Absolutely. I mean, sometimes it's just for having that authority in neutral. And those extra options. I mean, whether it's moves that you can heat dash, whether really it's the, <laughs> the heat smash. He's using boot pretty well at the moment. Yeah. So. Out round one. You know, it's standard stuff. Round two. New it's code. Pretty paint. aggressive first round. Both. They they both want big counters. Absolutely. If I know Brady, he wants a big counter. Looking for it, not getting it right now though with this ball carry. Please. And there's that. Oh, if you're not gonna get up, good just frame slide, slide even. Yeah. Solid round to answer back with Phoebe here. Both are swinging. Oh yeah, I think it's gonna get good. Oh man. Boot one, that worked out. Ooh. And you know, this is also a character that, despite some other characters on the roster having to make concessions with the counter hit tools that they may have lost the old launch on, drive with some of those. Have to have that execution on safe counter hit down three to close it out. Stood up into it and mashed, unfortunately. Round four. Fight. Starting off with an arm move. Showing exactly how he's wanting to play right now. Down three in the throw. Yeah. And 
That is such a potent new move. In the dual boot. With the, a lot of people have called it a hell sweep. Yeah. With the knockdown low. Again, aggression, name of the game. And Pretty is making that work for him. Quick Take match one. Game one. See how PB tries to answer back. It can be hard to even figure out what we're trying to do against the Elisa player, too. So. Oh, yeah. It's another character that will certainly test your uh, spacing in neutral. Right. You know, Mabel is still just backdash away. You gotta catch me. They got chainsaws out. You want her to put them away? Make her block. It's hard, though. Just like that. Going to the wall. Off right, isn't it? Counter pokes as necessary in a spot like this. Maybe. Hitting those counter hit down three, struggling to pick up though. But no matter. I, I can see the nerves a little bit in the dashes. Wow, fantastic timing on the rage art. Catches a forward two that. Uh, May have been a bit of a, a slip up there, I but think hey. Was, I think it was definitely just searching for the win. You got rounds to play with. The step, the infamous Elise step, she's got great with it. See, Phoebe not letting that first round no. still get in the way of this potential comeback. That's a good time. That was a... Uh, Kind of a, a new conversion there for me. So interesting to see what some of these characters I haven't quite seen as much in this game can do. Both players are kind of missing their duckable strings at the moment with each other. Uh, oh yeah, but hey, I mean, tournament. Nerves can get in the way at times. Just gotta play as solid as possible. And quality punish there. Let's get that simple low poke in there. Phoebe really... Phoebe's not discouraged. Working on trying to make this comeback. <laughs> See, like I was saying, uh, whether it's the 1 plus 2, down 3, Lee has no shortage of those counter hit tools in this game. Yeah, you know, I didn't think about it, but I feel like he might struggle, or Lee might struggle to get the Hitman stance shenanigans going on in this matchup. Cause, yeah. Like, like for example, the, the Dragon Off down from 4 check on Hitman Stance on hit or block, doesn't matter, you can interrupt it. Yeah, I feel like uh, Lisa could definitely respond with hers as well. Uh, a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, both competitors, depending on the result of this match, probably going to have a lot of uh, homework they can go. Oh, and you, this is what we were talking about earlier. You can just get away from the side wall, you still get your combos. Pretty optimized for that floor blast here. It's so important on uh, into this draft here. It was 2-0, but there was some decent looking around today. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Give them a longer set. You don't know what And that's what you want to see yeah. from, you know, an early Tekken 8 tournament like this. A lot of people still exploring their options, trying to keep it competitive here. Yeah, you could you could change characters by the time of, yeah. an ideal season comes out. So. Never know. We got Sol Naciente sitting down. I'm really curious to see how this bracket continues to... Uh, develop as we go. We've seen so many of these players that, you know, they're having strong starts to their day, and I'm really wanting to see some of these names that we've seen on bracket, yeah. or on the stream, collide in the that bracket. Tekken World Tour event. Yeah. And, you know, it's so funny, being on commentary, we just have this taste of what's going on, because we know how many competitors are over there just in the depths, mm. grinding it out off stream. In their own heads, and follow too. along at home if you're keeping up with the Star TG yeah. or with the uh, hashtag QCS Outlaws, I believe it is. I should double check that, make sure that uh, they've got that action going on. But no, I mean, it's a very good event so far. Really liking what we're seeing from these competitors. Things are picking up. You can definitely see the nerves and, and the back dashes and the little flash dugs we're getting at that point in the tournament. Absolutely. And there's some defensive adjustments. Players start thinking about how long go. they drove here. You know, I don't want to You got to make yet. that gas money, oh, yeah. you know, worthwhile. Yeah. 
Especially how much it is right now. <laughs> he, it's worth it for the Tekken. It looks like we might be getting Sol Naciente versus Uncle George on stream. It's going to be interesting. Victimo looming for the reassurance. Excuse me, uh, reassurance for Sol Naciente. It's always just so impactful when you have someone in your corner like that at a tournament. I've experienced that. I'm sure you've experienced it. Oh, Sol yeah. Naciente is experiencing it right now. Just having somebody there, whether it's, you know, giving you a bit of matchup information, keeping you calm, it helps a lot. It's like they played the first mind game, the Rock, Paper, Scissors for P1. No, um, to go back to your point though, no, it's, it's great to have someone by your side in times like this. And you know, when you think about it, so much of it is just depending on your uh, chemistry with the person. Absolutely. Sometimes it's all you need from somebody is just, oh, you've seen how, you know, this type of player is playing. You've seen, you know, this matchup before. Think about when you fought such and such. Like, you don't need somebody in your ear saying, oh, that you could duck the second hit. Yeah. Of that string. Um, All the granular information when most of the time goes out the window. Yeah, uh, when you're facing you know, a bear at the wall, you can sidestep this way to make sure that you're not getting hit by So much of that, it can get lost in the weeds. Just need some real generic coaching is sometimes the Absolutely. best coaching. Yeah. You can have somebody in your corner saying, Duck more. You know what to do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> get out of your own head. Let me speak to you for a moment. Get you on the right path. Have a walk, you know? While you're waiting in between rounds, step outside. Looks like Get we're going to be getting air. a king after all from Sol Naciente. So we had uh, said be before, fun. I believe Sol Naciente has played Asuka before hmm. quite a bit, I believe. I, doesn't matter right Nothing now. We're, we're seeing the more king. king. Yeah, that's for sure. This is an interesting matchup. I, you know, everybody's different. Granted, I can't speak for how Uncle George may feel against King. I feel like this is quite a struggle for Bears. It certainly felt that way in Tekken 7 as well. You've got options. You've got that G clef. King has options too, of course. It's going to be really interesting to see how this Just goes. thinking about while standing two. Mm -hmm. Or is it the full crouch two, down four two? That's what I'm thinking of. On King? Oh, yeah. Well, even just having the wall standing two, you can hit confirm, uh, I think, 14 frames with that homing mid. You know, it's nut punch potent. is so much more prominent than yeah. two. And these characters can both play a spacing game pretty well at that you know, range two that we're seeing them at, where the Bear Twin Pistons comes out. Not sure if this will be quite enough damage to close out a round, but it's looking like a very good spot for Uncle George. George definitely wants to get this over with Ooh. quick. You don't want Sol to think about it too long. All right, gets his round one. And maybe a moment slow on that punish with the wall standing 2-2, but it seems like Sol Naciente may know what's up a bit here. We'll see what's going on. Full charge on the normal. Ooh. We're gonna and hit bear the demon wall. uppercut. If you can land one in neutral there, you're gonna get a lot of reward. Uncle George looking like he has a, a pretty good feeling for this second round. All right, got the tech roll in the giant swing. You definitely want to get those at least if you're not breaking the giant swing. Always tech rolls. Break on the shining wizard. And do you know much about that howl that King has? It's so interesting that they gave him a tool like that. Where granted that was just the heat burst there. Yeah. He can just do the howl, absorb something just like Gigas and get a guaranteed, I think it's, I can't remember the exact options that he has out of there. Yeah. I know that he has a heat engager off of that. Like Gigas looking for the howl into a down two, kind of face the same thing here with King. There's a lot that to see Uncle some George is facing down. here, yeah. yeah. All right, both superpowers popped. And that heat smash. Ate the throw. Just running at you. Good Oki there to stop the bear flop on the ground. Calculating oh. for that, uh, with Topo. that situation after the wall. Right. George takes round three. Honestly, this would be pretty big for Uncle George. If oh yeah, certainly. Know, just close out a whole set against Soul. Using that reverse Jaguar step a lot here to try and make that space. Nice confirm on the wall standing 2-1. We'll see. Oh. 
get the chain grab to uh, end the combo there. Tech on that I was kind of interested to see uh, how that would go because I know King players in uh, Tekken 7 might do the uh, unblockable for, I don't know if it was guaranteed necessarily. The flip kick unblockable? No, oh, the, okay. I can't remember the name. It was like capital punishment, but uh, an unblockable. Yeah. Clearly not a thing here. Clearly no problem as we go to a final, final round of round. this game one. And there's that heat engager off the howl like I was talking about. Always got to keep let it in the mind. Cleft rip. Oh. And had that calculated step, it was just maybe a frame off. Another this confirmed. round is Beautiful. really going in Sol Naciente's favor. But you can never be too sure in Tekken no. 8. All it takes, one good hit, whether Honestly, it's that Bear Twin Pistons. Both of these players just stopping is like nerve-wracking itself anyway. Mm. Oh, And that should be it, it for that game one. Sol Naciente facing a little bit of uh, tribulations yeah. there in this matchup, but coming out on top for the game one, we'll see the adjustments that Uncle George can make. And what stage we might be going to here with the Tekken World Tour rules saying that you need Hanger. to randomize. Now the hanger is one that has multiple stage interactables. Yeah. Obviously, only one that you have to worry about here is that yellow balcony in the first area. But then once you get downstairs, you've got those wall blasts those that you also have to factor. Exploding walls. So much damage potential here. I think that's how it works in the military, right? Is it? I, maybe, I'm yeah. not too sure. <laughs> I feel like stuff might just blow Does up. Does not <laughs> sound like the life for me. I'd rather be at home playing Tekken. Same here. Or here at uh, Mid-South Outlaws watching some very good Tekken so far. Uncle George is not discouraged by losing match one. Definitely still running his offense. Mm. And what getting that DF1 string going. Now we saw it looked like Sol Naciente knew the punish for that. Maybe it was just off. We'll see if he gets a chance to enforce that. Just keep it and really simple. say, hey, uh, I know how to deal with this. You just got to think Uncle about George every... Keeps you gotta the think pressure about, going. You got to think about every King player you've ever fought online. Mm. Trust me, that's probably the last thing that I want to think about uh, right now. Lock on the twin pistol. Rather look at that solid defense that we're seeing from Sol Naciente. Now Danny, Boston Crab. To be quite frank, I have no idea what the break on that was. I think you were just supposed to hold one there. Do you? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's very... I'm sure the chat can correct Oh that, yeah, it's very uh, relieving in this game that, granted, maybe not me, if you do know the break for whichever option they're going with. Yeah. You can just hold it now. You don't have to be trying to mash it out. Yep. I know that with RDC, that helps a lot because Super that had change. a bit of a, a tight window there. Even if you, you know, have the break locked in, you're ready for what they're doing. It's a bit tough to mash it out. For something like that, you just got to hold it. Just like uh, Uncle George has to hold that pressure he was facing as Sol Naciente goes up two rounds to one. Got multiple running threes here. At the wall against King in oh, heat. Oh, he canceled Can you heat. name a worse situation? This team is trying to howl through it again. Oh, yeah. Oh, that run. <laughs> Have you seen it run that deep? The Jaguar run <laughs> is just such a prominent part of King's game plan in this game. I mean, the fact that they made it to where you could just tap back, pump the brakes at any moment. So threatening. Ooh. It's like giant swing. Always I think threatening. If you tech this, you might live. But, yep. All right. So one poke situation. Let's fight another day. See George. if That'll Saul it. Naciente closes it out. George could be proud of himself. They had a good match oh, yeah. one, you know. Certainly. Still in it. Uncle George. Soul is not got, uh, push over. Pretty far through what? I think that might be round three in uh, winter side. Yeah, we're going to be going down to the loser through. side here, but still got. The life to live there. Always got another shot down in the loser's bracket. You might not see those competitors on stream for you know, a little bit until we uh, really get down to the nitty gritty so of things. But I hope like, we get the Soul and Britty matchup on that stream. That would be that quite a match. Definitely one we're going to want to see. I want to see all of them. That's oh, yeah, of course. To be fair. You know, that's the thing. We're sitting over here. But, you know, my greedy side, I want to see those two play. Yeah. We're just looking over at all the hype going on here at Mid-South Outlaws with more than 50 people showing up for Tekken 8. It's beautiful. And we just, you know, we get a piece of it. We get a, a solid showing on stream over here. But guys, there are so many competitors who showed out for this first Tekken World Tour Dojo. And you can follow all of that 
here that is on Twitch on Star GG, looking at that bracket. Next time we have one of these brackets come out to a QCS tournament and enjoy that for yourself. I oh, it am. looks like I'm getting my wish. We will see Soul and Britty play on stream. Should be a really good match. Soul's coming right out of a match. So it's pretty warmed up. I'm wondering quite how far we are into the bracket and if uh, any of these top eight competitors are being set just yet. You know, we haven't seen Fusion on stream. No, I was hoping I'd get to see him. There's a number of them we have. I'm haven't. sure he's doing well. I haven't seen anything egregious in our uh, bracket right. breakdown. And you know, this will be a top eight qualifier between these two, winner's yeah. side. So we're getting down to it. Yeah, we got uh, Fusion and Sleepy Justin in our bracket at some point facing each other. Elite Kutch and Clutch and Jaja. -ja. Now you say that. It's our bracket. We're watching and enjoying. We are not, yeah, we're not having playing. to struggle through this. Uh, these competitors, I'm sure, are feeling really mentally overloaded at times with just how much they have to juggle for Tekken 8. You know, whether it's neutral, whether it's you know, dealing execution. with some of these characters in heat that are just menaces. The execution, yeah, that's something that you always got to keep on lock for yourself. Just feel comfortable with your own characters, routes and options, things of that nature. Should always be striving to feel locked in with your own character and then just facing your opponent for whatever they might throw at you. And we'll see what Britney Spears and Sol Naciente are uh, preparing to throw at each other here for this top eight qualifier. Uh, I think it's gonna get a little crazy. Well, I feel like that's, that's pretty certain. Assuming probably the same characters that we've seen. Yeah, so not sure if they've played each other before, maybe online, maybe not. Pretty, pretty, pretty stays pretty high up there. In those rankings, yeah. so probably seen some crossover. And you know, it helps a lot having the crossplay. Mm -hmm. I know that some people turn it off. I know for me personally, uh, it hasn't felt great at yeah. times with some of those crossplay connections. It gives you so much more capability to play against, you know, new players you're not as used to being able to, you know, whether it's train with online. These two might have fought, you know, at some point before online. It is. Might be their first meeting. Who knows? We're going to see how this plays out. Just how connected things are, whether round. it's at a tournament like this offline, whether you're enjoying Tekken at home through that crossplay. Such a good time for the game right now. Things obviously to be worked on, but we'll see how things go as we get into this game one between Sol Naciente and these years. Starting off pop. With okay. And immediately on with the heat. Into the shot. First 10 seconds of the, the game. <laughs> Look at the hell. Man. It's dangerous at And you know, I don't know quite how much you noticed it. The fact that King doesn't have to Jaguar run after that heat smash as well just adds another That's layer, layer. to that mind game. Ooh, -wee. That was an Locks the first match. hit, gets hit by the second. Uh, <laughs> And look at that damage off just, uh, I wouldn't say a stray hit, but definitely something that you have to calculate as you go. Whoa, what an option. What's the Oki? You know, those air grabs from King, they can, at a moment like that, when they come into play, uh, it can be a, a great coverage option. I've seen some running exploder on block. So potent. Beautiful. Good round. Three. Such good reward on that. Well, end up at the wall. No sweat. And having that wall explosion in your back. Mm -hmm. It's scary. Like, it's stage, a scary situation. The stage is so weird compared to some of the other ones. It's uh, a lot to take in compared to it's like you know, certain like, sections. Yeah. In Tekken 7, obviously, there were a number of things like that that you had to factor in, but once we were seeing in those first trailers, the wall explosion stuff, it was like, okay, 
It's another layer of the mind game that you're able to apply, whether it's at the wall like that. Pretty Spears trying to close out this game one. Go fast. Yeah. And what a close in the back one. Let's get much reward on it. It's another thing too, right? Like, if you're playing like Rudy, you kind of want to close this out. Oh, yeah. You don't want Absolutely. Soul to like, do too much thinking and it's king. during the match. Uh, you know, we've been talking about how strong some of these characters are in the aggressive system of Tekken 8. King is right up there. Not want to have to just hold some of this pressure that he makes a deal with. And keeping that wall course in mind there. They're all looking for timings, very particular timings. Doesn't matter much, pretty takes game one. Strong game one. Strong well. game one. They <laughs> got quite a crowd here for it. Let's see how Soul adapts. Take a moment, ready for the breathe, next think about it. No Get discussion. Into this next game, going right into the next one. Okay, with the you know, at least farm. having to go and rematch the stages, it gives you a second to breathe, even yeah. if it's not taking that, you know, thirty second time out, whatever you may need. Some people really need a lot of time to just think it through. We call it the dark art. Still, you have a little bit of a rest there. You're able to think. You know, what did I just get hit with? How am I able to battle back? Maybe the forward board was two there for the king. He ate a rainmaker. Oh man! Wow. That's uh, pretty strong. That's one. looking pretty strong to potentially close out this game one. And you know that's considering I'm about 99% sure we saw an auto tornado spin there to start that uh, combo. It was still enough to kill. Very well optimized from Sol Naciente. So definitely trying to establish some running pressure. All right, go for the punish there. I'm not trying to get some plus I have worked out very well as Pretty is trying to get his own mark on this game too. Big moves. Going to another wall. It's curious. We're still in the first part of the stage. It's one more. Uses the heat. Got to get out of this situation. All of this around from, uh, goes back in your favor. From the whiff, not much. You end up in this situation. It's tough. Still plenty of health, though. You know, I'm curious to see where that leaves these two. In the neutral space. Back to the wall is different, pretty. It's always something you gotta think about, not just the situation you know, of the rage art damage, but where it leaves you. You're able to clean up that round from pretty. Kicking his pokes, pretty's doing the rock, and really feeling himself right now. Whenever you see somebody doing that rock. Oh, yeah. They're in it. You know they're getting that momentum. But it's also something that you have to juggle as a competitor. It's definitely something that I've seen where people can get a bit feeling themselves too much. Let it slip away a bit right there. You know Birdie's going to try to keep that composure going into this next round. New all so not CSA wants to even this up. Take up most focus. There's a lot of uh, funny realignment stuff going on. Oh, yeah. Down rocket too well. Ooh, that is too much. Long round there. They are swinging. You know, pretty on match point here. Getting the heat going. That's exactly what we need. Tekken 8. Oh. Look, in 45 seconds. That's yeah. I mean, there's. <laughs> There's a lot to take in here in just you know about 20 seconds of gameplay. No round. backdashes, just We are lives, just you know. now in the second part of the stage. <laughs> now have to factor in a floor break. Soul needs one focus. Just sort of scrambling here. Down one. And that was just enough to take us to a game three here. And I'd say fairly well deserved game three for both of these two with how hard they're competing for this. You know, gotta balance those tournament herbs. Both of these players are players that can easily be in grand finals. Get ready yeah. for the next battle. Getting into one. game three. Fight. Hey, four really float. Start with the float. You know, <laughs> if you get a float like that, might not be huge damage. It's mental damage. Oh yeah. Get floated round start off of like yeah. one of the simplest moves you can do. But hey, 
If you look at Solnaciente's health bar, got some of that back, just slugging back into this round. Sir. That Jaguar run one, being safe. Touch Who, whose idea was that? Uh, I guess as good as mine. Dealing with the chainsaw chip damage into it, eat dash. Could have blocked. You know that. Oh, launch punish. Oh, no. wow. Still got something for it though. Was that down back two one two or something like that? Definitely want to launch punish. Them. Mm, we're seeing a lot of throws. Good, good breaks. Though. What are we seeing? Jaguar run right through the up. Oh. These, these are these are two really goofy button. characters. Here. Seeing a lot of okay. here. <laughs> and it's working out. So yeah. Just needed a tempo change, you know. You start throwing instead of poking. Proper one check. Very cool against Lisa. You know, I'm curious to see how this goes with uh, how aggressive, obviously, we're seeing each of these players. How much Tonaciente is just keeping up the tempo with those throws. Yeah, it's almost like British kind of invited him into doing this. Yeah. And it's fairly even throughout each of these games. Oh, wow. Through the whole screen, the Jaguar run is crazy. Okay. Look at all that grail. Oh. It didn't quite matter much. Sol, Sol Naciente is looking at taking the game. With the heat still on your side, that's something you always got to think about. Hey, maybe if I can land a heat again, I can get a lot of that back. Myself back into this game. He's trying to do right now. Yep. He's got to hit your combo. Face off. And look at this range. Look at that. At least he's still able to stay away. Chip. Look at that. Look at the chip. Look at the gray life. That's going to take us to him. Naciente on the ropes, but that might not be an unfamiliar spot Gritty. for King. Gritty takes Did. his game against Soul in winners. Soul still in it though. And what a strong match that was. Yeah, no, that was on both sides. I mean, I'm sure both of those two are a little shaky at the moment. A little scrambly at times, but we're seeing some really good tech. Yeah. Now the uh, the Jaguar run through all of that whole Elisa sequence, that was oh, kind of yeah. crazy. I didn't oh, think yeah. it would go that far. You know, there's a lot that they can both go and do their homework on. Something like that, though, it's, again, I had said scrambly. It's one of those scrambly situations where you really have to think, okay, um, do I have to commit to this whole string? Am I able to, like, sneak in a low? Uh, where is, for instance, a king player doing that Jaguar run? Where can I maybe, like, poke him out of it? Also, having to consider the fact that king can always just stop that Jaguar run. There's so much they have to adjust for in this game. It's a new game, new tactics. Uh, this game in Tekken 7, but We still got Subway Wayne coming back up. Against the mayor. Might see the uh, Leo mirror here. Who's his opponent? On the, on the mayor. Face to me. Oh, that's the Leo mayor. Okay. Very strong know the Leo name player now, but from Ohio. Gotcha. Been doing very well in a lot of their tournaments. I you guess that, really uh, He's also, I believe, been looking at different characters in this game quite a bit. I had seen him at least tweeting a lot about Eddie. Not sure if he's, you know, been trying the character out for himself. Played Lee and Julia, I believe, as well in Tekken 7. Respectable. But, you know, we'll see what he's feeling like today. It's a new day, new bracket. Yeah, do they do they both willingly take the Leo mirror? You know, some people are very against, like, purposely picking into a mirror match like that. Yeah. Some it, people... Competitive environment, it's, it's a little spooky. And some weird. people see it as a, a test of will of... Can I handle my character's own options against me? We'll see how these two are adjusting in the 
mirror. These two will also get to find out who's the next best Leo player in Ohio. Yeah. Feels like uh, a little bit more online, just uh, <laughs> compared to this being, should be a top eight qualifier here. Yeah. Yeah, no, Ross whoever advances is. from this makes it. Uh, we'll see who's joining Cody Spears in that top eight. I think we got Subway's detective outfit, detective Leo. Yes, the mayor should be on here. That Ooh, hit confirmed. Boy. It's so fun. See, this is the big Leo game. If you, if you train your brain to just watch that down back to hit confirm, especially with heat as a factor, it's my reward. And now they're both looking for it. We're going to see a lot of interesting stance cancels, crouch dashing. And that lightning glare right with my first, that first round from there. This, again, we've talked about it before, this character that really seems like Leo might be thriving in this game. I mean, everybody has their own different opinions on the, the balance of this game, but clearly no shortage of options here, especially with the lightning glare available on both sides. You see all that red and blue on the screen. Some of just looking for their big button. One big hit. You know, you never know if Subway Wayne might pop that heat burst just to get that pressure going. Yeah, you might want to. You might want to see him do that. Be low health. Uh, I died with him, unfortunately. And down back to doing work. Fight. Do you do you happen to know the head-to-head -head between these two? Who gets, sure. the, who gets the best from the other one? Not too sure. It's I know that like uh, mayor at the moment. they've likely faced each other at least a few yeah, times in those brackets. Right? They're both fairly well traveled. Excuse me, well traveled in this region. I've seen both at you know some of the events in Louisville. Um, went up to Cincinnati and saw them both there. The mayor won that, and he's looking in prime position to try to take this game one. That is so game one easy. Let's see what adjustments are made on Subway Wang's side. I don't want to say that about our boy, but you know, that was, that was a quick 3-0 sweep. Goes back to character select. See what he's thinking about. I know that Subway is. Really do it Quite though. confident on the Leo being the main, obviously, but a lot of choices to be made here. It's hovering over Claudio. Could just be taking a breather. Yeah. You don't want to just rush into things. And right now on these menu screens, you don't want to think about it. And especially in this mirror that we're going to be running back, think, Get ready how are my battle. own character's moves used against me? How can I do that myself? Maybe we see a bit more of the down back two on some side. A little bit of, little bit of exchange of words, some smiles. Round one. Oh, well, I wouldn't blame Mayor. Oh, plenty to smile about after that game. Oh, no. okay. He's got something to smile about right now. Got a down score two lunch, round start. You know, speaking of the stage interactables, I think Into the Stratosphere is also just a really interesting one. The fact that it doesn't actually end up mattering until at least the third round. Yeah. It adds a... Uh, different dynamic for sure at least for the first two rounds it is probably the most straightforward oh, yeah. regular stage in the game oh yeah the most of them aren't regular stages anyway oh boy you can call regular in this game <laughs> uh, there's so much you know we don't have our age. soups in our yeah our violet systems at know, times straightforward normal stages we don't got it at times, the stages, the characters, they can feel anything but regular. So we're playing fairly what slow pace here. They're both just looking for these hits. Really, each really other paying off from Subway Wang, trying to close out the second round. He's back in there. Hoping to get himself on the board here, looking for that top eight spot. Fair. Always able to remain poised. Big whiff. Nothing better. And that wall standing for one plus two, being a full crouch, wall standing key engager rather. He comes into play so much for Leo, such a long pull. See the nerves. Oh yeah, no one wants to lose anything. That was a parry. Yeah. Well, really comfortable close. in the mirror. Right after the down pull. A lot of down pull two gaming here. Oh. And sometimes you just gotta throw it out. Hop kick paying off fairly well. Not sure if this would be the. That is the round with the open at the wall. Air 
Bowser's looking at taking his match too. Becoming a factor opens up some extra options. Subway waiting to try to battle back, but the mayor claims it for himself. You know, came off a low parry, so he gotta adjust as necessary, but especially getting that guaranteed bump at the end. So much damage and just cashing out on what was, you know, it could have felt like, oh, I did a low. Not the end of the world. It certainly put the mayor at a good spot here, and Subway is like. The mayor's let those hot kicks rip again. Oh, yeah, why not? No doubt for the same game. Especially with that down back too. Looks like the mayor might take the game. That was a convincing win. That was just dialed in. So that should be our second top eight competitor now decided. Really whittling down things on the winner's side. I'm sure still a bloodbath on losers. See Fusion standing up around here. Finally. Likely stepping up for another top eight qualifier. Let's check the bracket and see exactly where we are with this. Should be Fusion versus Sleepy Justin. This will be interesting. And that is actually not a top eight qualifier, but winner of that will be vying for a spot in their next match. Fusion's done a lot of exciting stuff. He's so young. Certainly. Uh, Justin's been around for a while. Left and came back from, came back to the game. You know. um, it's a good test for him, honestly. And you know, like I was saying before, playing a much more normal character with Jin compared to Akuma in Tekken 7. It's a lot for Justin to be taking in just how you can approach you know, different matchups, whether it's a new character, like if we see the Azusena from Fusion, or if it's, you know, some of these matchups that may be a bit more obscure. Right. Uh, there's still so much to learn with coming to a, a very different approach to the game with Jin compared to Akuma in Tekken 7. And I'm sure it's really working out for him to see the game in a new light. And we'll see what kind of light Fusion is seeing the game in with uh, his character selection here. Seemed a little unsure of what he wanted to play today. I think he's just going to run the Azu, though. Probably has been. And you know, I would not fault that choice at all. Until something happens. Keep playing. Oh, yeah. Right until the wheels fall off. Whether that's, you know, find another character that works better for you or whether... Nehemko steps in the way. Azusena is certainly working out for a number of these competitors, not just here, but worldwide. You know, I was watching some of the Afrika Tekken League this morning. And Great Tekken being played on there. Yeah, there is certainly a lot of Azusena representation globally. I think they've all just kind of pressured each other into uh, yeah. exposing the character a bit. That uh, They also had a dojo happening in Pakistan today for the start of the Tekken World Tour. Did they? And I was watching Arslan Ash again. That's a big dojo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's really the start of the season here. And we are just pretty privileged to see such a stacked tournament here at Mid-South Outlaws. Follow along at home using that hashtag QCS Outlaws to catch all this action at this Tekken World Tour Dojo as we get into this game one between Fusion and Sleepy Justin. Grown Man Fusion. 2-1 series. All right. <laughs> Getting that running 3-2 yeah. started early on. I saw the flip being attempted. So much chip. That's what we're talking about with those wall combos, man. You you hit the side splay. Oh, yeah. You're still in trouble. Already digging a bit of a hole right. in this game one. And Justin looking for an opportunity to battle back. Still has heat on his side if he wants to take it. But Didn't need the flip there. Got to chill out on the flip a little bit. Sometimes you just got to calculate that risk and reward. You know, throw seen it work before. Throw out the forward I happen four, again. the back oh, threes, yeah. you know. You can do a little safer things than... We'll see how the, uh, the cogs are turning in Justin's brain here. Trying to battle just such a potent Azusena here. Yeah, it's tough. Getting that perfect in the game, too, for Fusion. Really looking like he's got a commanding lead on this match so far. Justin's just got to have... He has to slow Fusion down. That's the, oh, yeah. that's the key here. And, you know, I find it really curious that... They gave a new character crouch grabs. I feel like it's, just, you know, <laughs> something about it just feels like kind of a legacy thing. Yeah. But getting that full crouch low into the guaranteed crouch grab clearly worked out for Fusion as he was able to take that game one. That's a really quick. Um, yeah, we're going to go back to the stage because those are the rules, but I would 
definitely take a minute to think about what yeah. just happened to me there. Going to a uh, another stage, plenty of the interactables at play, descent into subconscious. You know, going from Tekken 7 with Forgotten Realm to Tekken 8 and this stage being yeah. pretty much the primary floor break stage, it's kind of refreshing to see that it's not just immediately dealing with it. You've got to prime the yeah, floor yeah. break. You've got to work for the floor break. It's a kind of fun mini game in their game within the game to uh, see where you can factor in those extra options that you have. Oh, man. Not seeing one quite yet, but Fusion's no in a issue hurry. on Fusion's side to get this pressure running. In a big hurry, so that's Wait, it's a, a knockdown low from Liver to Door Stance. Got back to back so perfects potent. across the mansions. No punish on the whiff. Hop kick. Lucky. Both of them not taking too terribly many risks right now. Some stuff going unpunished, but hey, we've all seen that in tournaments. Just those nerves, you gotta factor it in. And you know, Fusion getting a lot of mileage with that wall standing three into Libertador stance. Plus frames, chip damage, clearly setting up some pressure here. A lot of running three twos. Fusion doesn't care that it's been nerfed. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's arguable whether yeah. or not it's even realistically a nerf. It was tough to deal with before. You know, the sidestep left duck counterplay was tough to really factor in when you're actually playing the game in a tournament. But that was at least, you know, it felt pretty doable compared to the challenge that some people are facing with sidestepping it. And Azusena just flies by, much like this match is feeling for Justin. Fusion's just a well steady player. Couldn't find a chance to battle his way back as Fusion moves ahead in our winner's side of the bracket. Justin's still in it, though. He just has to go through losers now. The and I know he'll be staring. <laughs> That gauntlet down, trying to make his way to the top eight. A loser's pool with Sol Naciente and whoever else has ended up down there at this point. It's going to be a battle. And a long one. You know, it's always just so beneficial if you can keep your cool to get through those rounds of winner's side. For sure. Because not only, obviously, do you continue to advance in the tournament, you don't have to worry about one life left in the tournament but also how much longer that makes the bracket. You could be, you know, oh, I've got one more game to win uh, in top eight, and then, or rather, to qualify for top eight, and then, you know, I'm in the money, I'm in the Tekken World Tour dojo points. You lose that, you could be looking at two, maybe three rounds of that loser side bracket, and being loser side, only having one life left, there's a lot to worry about. And you know, the dojo points just brought, a, brought back a good point, like, it's a little bit of an upset for a player like Soul to drop into losers. Oh, yeah. I mean, really, that's what, that's what they're here for. Yeah, players absolutely. like him and Victim, just, they want these points. They want first place. It's a good opportunity to get your name up there early on in the Tekken World Tour. You know, no matter the size of the dojo, they've got the different uh, point distributions, whether it's 16, 32, 48. We should be in that 48 plus. Not too sure where that'll leave the first place on the Tekken World Tour leaderboard, excuse me, leaderboard early on. But, you know, looking ahead to multiple opportunities, whether they're dojos, the challenger events, masters, master plus, everybody wants those points. Everybody wants to get their name, you know, either up there on the leaderboards, yeah. into the Tekken World Tour finals. So much to try to compete for in this game, along with just the pride. They're yelling for Victimo. Might she finally see Victimo screen. up on stage. I see him. He's making his way through. There are a lot of people in here. There's a guy with a very pink blazer. <laughs> it is pretty nice, at least, compared to when we had stepped in here and the place was just swarming with competitors. We are able to look out and really see, like, okay, where the tech and people are set up, people enjoying Guilty Gear Strive over here on the mainstream. Uh, it's Looks feeling like a little bit more streamlined. Squall and Victimo playing. And you know, from what I've seen of Tekken 8, should be uh, Nina versus Reyna. For what I've seen from Squall in this game, rather. And right. Victimo always representing that Nina oh, well. Oh, is Squall on the Reyna now? Yes, should oh, be. Wow. At least last I saw at okay. Cincy Clash a while back. Yes. Yeah, it's been a few years since I've seen him at, at something. I remember him used to play Leo mm -hmm. way back. That's cool.
And I'm curious if this one's going to be a top eight uh, qualifier here as well. Yes, it is indeed. So far, this will be our third qualifier match. We also have Elite Clutch and Jaja facing off off stream right now. Should, at least, winner of that facing Fusion for another spot in the top eight. And then checking in on our loser's bracket here. BB versus Sunny. Uncle George waiting for their next competitor. Cobb still in there. Hurricane Fury. A number of names that nice I'm quite names familiar too. with yeah. in this region. Got a we'll see about the character variety. There it is. You know, Reyna, if we do see the Reyna at least, is just such a testament to the offense in Tekken 8. Between obviously having the FF2 so potent and neutral, unbreakable grabs from both stances. I mean, I, I know that I'm certainly... Midnight Siege. Certainly uh, simplifying it a bit, but it's the immediate things that come to mind with what you have to deal with with this character. How do you feel about this stage? This is a pretty good I like stage this stage, too. aesthetically. Uh, I hate it online. I call it the raid stage. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, looks like straight out of the raid. All right, getting into round one. Yeah, Victima playing as a same. No need. A lot of forward four action here on the side of the Reyna. Running free two. Hey, you know, we didn't even say anything about it. Victimo on the Azusena. Yeah. A little no. bit of a surprise here. Yeah, but again, is. strong character. Maybe a little easier to simplify things with that pressure compared to Nina. I mean, of course, a competitor of Victimo's caliber, very used to Big buttons being pressed. the Nina. But the Azusena might just be a refreshing change of pace. Quick round one for Victimo. Mm. To the heat engager. And you know, so many people have been talking about those armored heat engagers. Yeah. Especially with Azusena. And it's just something to factor in with this uh, this game and the new system mechanics. Look at the heat smash. And look at the life. Look at the life lead. There's only 40 seconds left in the match. Mm. And that FF2 doing work, trying to battle back. So you do rarely see the little 10 second mark in this game anymore. Oh yeah. Unless you're really familiar with your opponent. And a lot of Stonehead here. A lot of stonehead. Squall on the Reyna. Well, Jank Hell Sweep. Didn't matter much. I don't know about Jank actually. That Hell Sweep into, uh, I believe it goes into Heaven's Wrath. At least you have the option to go into the stance uh, on hit. Just so potent. Pretty good. Getting this pressure at the wall. Oh! Oh! Wow! That taunt, I believe, is that was specifically a taunt? Okay. yes, uh, specifically a launcher in heat. Huh. I'm not saying much about it because I don't terribly <laughs> know much that about it, but it's very surprising to see in a bracket, especially this deep into the bracket. That's quick. It's cool action. though. It's one of those things that really adds to the character's charisma, as I had said before. I'm going to be real with you. I had not seen that yet, so that yeah. was kind of surprising Well, you know, Lee me. also has a taunt that I, I can't remember. I think he has to be in heat for it. If Lee does a taunt, he has a just frame on it that restores some of his heat gauge. So it's gotcha. cool that they've, you know, taken steps with things like that or with the Azusana taunt in heat to really factor that into game. I mean, of course, we haven't seen any Brian today. But knowing Brian has taunt as an unblockable, certainly something to factor in. And it's just always neat to see how that impacts the character personality and the gameplay. Seeing things really working out so far with Azusena here on Victimo's side. You can see Squall try to establish something for himself against Victimo here. Otherwise, we might see him run away with it again. A lot of running free two. Mm. And look at all the gray health on yeah. the side of Squall. You know, it feels bad. You eat one throw and you're dead. Squall's trying to battle back here. And with heat on Squall's side, that gray health could come into play as well. One poke. And Victimo just getting that wall standing four in there. Able to close it out for that first round of game two here. Getting some good movement too. 
And that was a really smart check, I'd say, on Victimo's side to contest against Squall's FF2. Yeah, no, I mean, 442, jab or die, right? Like, Oh, yeah, certainly. It, you, could, you could die for jabby. You could also just die for doing nothing, so take your chances while you can. It's the type of thing that really forces your hand uh, on defense. You really yeah. just have to... Come into something. something. Uh, Tekken 8, just stand for the something, of the game. right? <laughs> mm. now it's looking like Squall's trying to break the, the wall of defense here. Squall really trying to get you know, some offense start here, whether it's the FF2s, the 4-4s. Four not getting a lot of damage actually going this way. And you know, you could stand there and force your opponent to block your pressure all day. Yeah. You have to make sure to convert that into actual damage somewhere. We've seen that with you know, some of the health sweeps. Like a power We've seen pressure. that a lot on Victimo's side. And look at that chip that Victimo is running 3 2. So much of it comes back to small with that heat engage. And it's such a small heat engage on Reina's side. Stance cancel. There's that hell sweep. There's, there's oh, I figured yeah. that may hit through the rage art. Blows out the round for Squall. Getting the work here. Let's see if this is what begins Squall's really. He's, he's a very capable player. Um, you know, just play like a Timo. Got a lot to do. And the Sentai stance off. It's always so interesting to see how different Reina players use, whether it's the Sentai 4, that big plus on block overhead kick. Obviously, there's quite a risk to it if someone like Victimo is jab checking against the Sentai stance. He, he definitely seems to know some of these strings that they're being done. Oh, and the fact that she can just Stutter. stagger that pressure. And with a slight evasion, you know, in the Libertador stance there from Azucena, it's really tough to wrap your head around at times. It's definitely. Have to go and be very purposeful in your labbing. You can't just, you know, think, oh, yeah, I'm gonna they're actually even jab counter poke. Right Squall was a little, little flabbergasted by what happened to him there. At the oh end. yeah. <laughs> Get would those not, tips while you can, you know. Would not blame Squall at all for that. No. <laughs> and so Victimo should be securing his spot. It's top eight after that. We are nearing. See. I think there's some games going on as well. Well, yeah, yes, that was a 2-0 on the side of Victimo, commanding to get into top eight here at Mid South Outlaws. Looking to win this tournament, and it looks like I don't know if we should be getting it on stream next. Elite Clutch versus Fusion here, both of them stepping up to the stream setup. This this will be a good match. Certainly should be. I'm sure they've crossed paths before. They're both. Both pretty well traveled players as well. And you know, so. with that first game that we had, first match rather, that we had seen of Fusion against Sleepy Justin. Yeah. So locked in right now. Oh, yeah. Fusion, Fusion is ready to go here. Fusion. As I had mentioned, getting a lot of that online tournament experience, yeah. getting so comfortable with this game, playing numerous characters, but the Azusena really looking ready to go. He, he was molded by, this, by these games. Oh, honestly, yeah. Honestly. So. Yeah, both are well traveled. Uh, Lamont's been all over the region, yeah. been to a lot of majors himself. Fusion, not sure on his major attendance, but I'm sure he's attended a couple at least. You know, funny story. Um, last time I had seen Fusion at a major, last major I had went to, last year being Evo. Not sure if I had seen Fusion there. Um, Combo Breaker 2022. We had both uh, bought our way into the auction tournament, and I had paid for Ganryu. Yeah. I had paid like $100 just oh, to. Drop the hundo on the Ganryu? Get oh, blame cooked oh, blame by Fusion's Chloe. Uh, and oh, he, how much did you I get think, Chloe for? I can't remember. I think $5. He, he either won that auction tournament or got really far in it. Man, that was an embarrassing show for me with Ganryu. I, it I is also, so <laughs> tough to wrap your head around how a player like Fusion is able to play with, you know, an invasive character like Chloe in Tekken 7 or the Azuzena and some of the just solid Tekken tools that she has in this game, as well as some of that evasion. I mean, you'll see, I, I believe it's the down back three plus four that she has, kind of like a backswing blow here. Um, not quite the same as, you know, with Chloe having that full launch on hers in Tekken 7, but clearly Fusion is making these tools work oh, yeah. quite well in this game. 
Lamont's we're seeing big. a strong start. But you know, we're getting some of that Claudio representation on the stream right now, and I'm glad to see it. Yeah. I, I feel like, you know, Slept on character is quite a bit of potential, obviously, not having as many of those counter hit launching tools from Tekken 7. Still plenty capable. We're going to see what Elite Clutch can do after dropping that game one here. It is really something to see Fusion come so far. Oh, yeah. And both of them playing fairly patient. Yeah. See, I, I feel like they probably played together. Not first. committing you know, too heavily to some of these strings. Really trying to feel things out in this first game. And that's so critical, especially in a game like Tekken 8, where you could get exploded off of one hit. All right, no dreidel spin for the Claudio there. Really respectful, honestly. Whoa, Oof. that back one doing work <laughs> against the heat sick. first. Yeah, respect that. Uh, oh, whoa, okay. That was, that was really wonky looking. Loading it up that. Interesting. You know, the first time I had seen that rage art, I wasn't sure if it was, you know, kind of the same properties as usual yeah. rage arts. It is mid, but it's just something that I think it's got a, a bit more like variable, uh, not variable rather, but the range is a bit different compared to some rage arts. Uh, I've certainly seen where it's, at least I believe I have seen where it hits, you know, a bit further out. Yeah. Just something to factor in with trying to punish it, but a very good read there for Elite Clutch. However, not quite coming into play here in this third round as Fusion closed it out with a perfect. Yeah, Fusion's in a hurry as usual. It's really interesting to see him do this to a player like Elite Clutch as well, so. Oh yeah. With all that chip. Oof. I think we're gonna look at the Converting end of the Converting into some real damage here, taking that game one for Fusion. Quick game one. Got some things to think about. Mm. I don't know if we'll see a character switch. I'm not sure if Elite Clutch oh. has been playing other characters like that recently. All I've seen so far in Tekken 8 is Claudio. The Claudio's been seeming to work out. Yeah. It's just a matter of seeing these adaptations. Not too sure how familiar Elite Clutch is with the Azusena matchup, the ins and outs of it. Of course, everybody's fought a little bit of Azusena so far. It's really about getting in the lab, seeing, you know, where you've got those little opportunities to, you know, can I fuzzy this, you know, DF1 string? Uh, can I move around the sidestep? Or, excuse me, can I sidestep around the running three? We're going to see how Elite Clutch can... You know, Put some of that stuff into use here, spinning on his matchup knowledge. crouch low into a down throw? Oof. Oh, and gets the float off that forward four extension. Drop the combo. I think it's just a little too far, honestly. Facing the wall here. Stance Backs out again. of limit the door stance, just Ugh. staying safe here. And that new move for Claudio, so potent. Launch on it's very strong. I believe only minus two and it's a mid. There's the backswing blow we were Only talking about. Two, man. Mixing in that solid gameplay with taking those risks. It's a risk you gotta calculate, but the reward very Side high. Step threes. It's just looking really standard from Fusion right now. Oh yeah. Uh, Shades of the Sleepy Justin match earlier. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. No, absolutely not. Fusion just Run looking through. plenty comfortable in this set. And in this tournament in general, trying to close out that second round here. One poke. You know, that standing three string that Billy Clutch showed the extension of, that's something that, as well, you've got to get familiar with, you know, the way matchups change in this game. Getting that new extension, it's... Very strong being a heat engager, 14 frame heat engager even. But if you're just throwing it out, it's a risk reward you gotta calculate. Swinging 3 2 is absolute menace still. And we do have the floor blast. Yeah, factor still here. Up, still up on the. Still up for grabs, right? Not gonna matter though. Game two. Fusion takes it. Quick game two. Securing a spot in the top eight here. There should be. Should be four. In the top eight so far, we yeah. should be seeing some losers bracket action shortly. I say we're getting close. People for fighting for their tournament lives. I think the winners is just about wrapped up.
Alright, it's wrapping up, and we have three more rounds of the loser's bracket. So keep it locked here at Mid South Outlaws. Got Super Justin coming back. And let me check. I do have the point distribution handy. Since this is a 40 plus dojo. So far, all of these competitors should be getting at least one TW. Excuse me, TWT points uh, if they have got ninth place or higher. So clearly, a lot of them in the loose bracket still trying to get that one point. Yeah, Hopefully, more. Point. You gotta get that point. Everyone that we've seen going into the winner side top eight should secure at least a few points there. Obviously, I'm sure those competitors will do their due diligence, make sure they've got all their info. On the, uh, I think they use the tournament portal now, which is honestly pretty innovative for Troy and seeing that keep up with the Tekken World Tour leaderboard. So, we've got big moments going on around here. So, it's looking like. A lot of strive hype in here. Yeah. I know people are still in place for it. Um, let's see. We've got Sleepy Justin versus. His opponents, uh, Dr. Legend. Dr. Legend, I uh, I had fought his Zafina in that first, it was a day two tournament that we had um, the Cardinal Gaming store in Louisville, obviously a few months ago. Now we'll see how Dr. Legend has developed his Zafina since then. But um, really curious to see some of the adjustments that Justin makes in his gameplay here in order to keep himself alive <laughs> in the loose bracket. Got to get the fusion game out of your head. Oh yeah. Start anew. You know, considering Dr. Lesnar's for the next loser battle. side bracket here as well, fighting through it, trying to get his spot up there in that top eight. A lot of second to be played though. We'll see how these two competitors go at it here in uh, this game one. Zafina's a really interesting pick. Zafina in Tekken eight is kind of an enigma. Yeah. If you look at the back dash, certainly not what it once was. Namco even, you know, had mentioned that they're going to be working on that. But the reward off of that parry, even if that backdash isn't working out, very solid defensive option. Justin calls it out though. Can't convert into that full combo as he would hope to close out the round. Just needs a couple good moves. You gotta, you gotta keep it together. And you know, having having two very strong heat smashes for Spina, can't take that for granted. Certainly, I mean, just the 12 frame standing, the high, of course, heat smash though, uh, and then also having a low from Scarecrow, it just had stuff you really have to worry about in the world range. Often, you know, when your opponent is in heat, worrying about, okay, maybe Jin is gonna do the Demon Ball or the Heat Dash. Maybe you gotta worry about the heat smash at the wall. So much to keep in mind for that mental stack. Second eight. Fight. Speaking of though, this took round two, pretty convincing. I think both are just gonna slug as much as possible. Oh yeah, we're seeing a lot of options. Getting to the top eight. No one's really trying to block it. Crash dash three. You gotta get desperate for it. You gotta make a bleed. Interesting, okay. I, I thought he was gonna show me something beautiful with the hop over. I miss those. Uh, huh. Kind of miss hop over Oki. Okay, that makes one of us. A lot of it's gone. Say. It's pretty much all of it. Yeah. Just battling his way through this game one, just trying to close it out with two one lead in rounds. Keep it simple. Two, two, two one. Two one four. Your L O K. Uh, to see if Dr. Legend will try to apply that heat a bit more going into this game too as just a little bit of one here. Keeping that heat gauge until, you know, round is over can be really detrimental. Honestly, at times it feels like half the game playing Tekken 8. There's so much to keep in mind with how heat can factor into those rounds. We've seen it plenty of times today. I'm going to be really curious to see how Dr. Legend can maybe apply some of that stuff that Sabina gets in heat. Yeah, he didn't. I have nothing against him. He didn't really get to play the last game, so. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta really just uh, feel like you're dialed in a bit more, locking in, keeping those options all 
in mind. Look for a good whiff punish. Oh know? yeah. Especially, I don't know how much you've seen it. Safina having the forward one plus two gives her a great whiff punishment option in the heat. The heat and the same it's mid. So that as well. The Scarecrow 2 1. Very potent. Justin, I'm only going to pump the brakes here against that parry. Showing a little discipline. Up with it, but Dr. Legend trying to battle into round one. Don't want to whiff the 4 4. Fight. Going with the slow lows. Again, if it ain't broke. Don't fix it. Get some pressure going. Slow as lows. Hit the floor. a launcher it's not just a launcher you're gonna have obviously all that damage you have to factor in where the health bars are but you gotta deal with for Oki both you know open space and at the wall there really limits your movement get options you gotta get creative battle. at times with hey you know I've got a heat burst if they're I don't know doing something that's pretty slow on my face maybe I can burst through this get my own damage pressure going now one one Dr. Legend is good in the last match, but uh, Jimmy's using the same rhythm. I find it pretty funny. In that second game, clearly what was working out really well was the lows for Dr. Legend. You see Justin start game three here with a down two immediately. He may be catching on a little bit there. Risking it with the flip. Hey, if you can sniff it out, don't work for the money, make it work for you. Justin's doing just that. Applying those heat options with the uh, Hell Sweep. Oh, I'm gonna keep it simple against the yeah. you know. A lot more cogs. I just wanna, just wanna play the bouncer. Keep yeah. it out of the flow. Don't let her, don't let her act up. She could wait out the side of line. She's certainly getting bounced by that Zen up one at the moment. Getting to the ball. There's that heat smash. As I mentioned having that 12 frame heat smash is so potent. Well, the screen kick such a strong hero. Alright, Justin's looking at match point. Fight. Kind of feels like they're both a little unfamiliar with each other's characters. Yeah. But I mean, you know, even after a tournament like this, it gives you so much data to go home and look at, hey, you know, I can launch this big flip. There's, you know, this unsafe. Yeah, he's going to be very upset when he looks at flip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I was the first time as well. So many, you know, different strings to get acclimated to. But, you know, it is a tournament. Still competition. But overall game, it's not a race. These competitors, I'm sure, will stick with it for years and continue to develop their defense as they're putting it to the test right now. Both of them trying to get this oh so important game three. Realistically, to stay alive in this tournament, such a stacked bracket, they want these points. Hey, Mom, I got my oh, yeah. Something to celebrate, go up for bed. No celebration yet until the game's over, though. Can't celebrate till you win, so. Okay. I'm always kind of scared to hold back after the heat burst or the heat pop. Oh yeah. Sometimes you know what it is. Half the match time. Let's see how. 
how this can be about. Final round. Final game, final round, and we're seeing the emotions on these competitors over here. Got a lot of the forehead wiping, the hand wiping. Oh, and Scarecrow for always, always both. Scarecrow 2 1 was a lot of work. Legend throughout that set. That was Closes really, it out strong. That was really close. I know that both of those two were nervous. Burn it off. The emotions <laughs> definitely riding high here. Accidental PS5 turn off. No, no problem. We'll have to kick that back on. Give us a moment. We've all been there. Yep. Dr. Legend feeling pretty happy with himself. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you have to after a hard fought match like that. I mean, I'm sure you've also had, like I've had plenty of times where it feels like I really just get through a tournament set from the skin of my teeth. Oh yeah. You are just glad to breathe afterward. Maybe, you know, regardless of the result, you just think, oh, Take that yourself was tough. a well-deserved step outside. Yeah. Let's see. Next. Yeah. Cool. Said two more matches on stream. I don't know what what we'll get to see, but yeah, I mean some matchups are interesting. It's Cobb stiff competition and, here. Cobb and Hurricanes Fury are gonna have I'd a like losers match at some point. Sol Naciente is waiting on someone. Doctor Legend is gonna play Jaja, and the winner mm. gets to play against Subway Wang. Wow. Yeah. Is that a top eight qualifier? Yeah. I figured. You know, playing in, uh, let, me, let me double check the bracket, make sure I got my facts straight. Subway Wang playing in that top eight qualifier against the Mara, I figured it should drop him down to another top eight qualifier there. But, you know, these competitors have, again, another shot at life, another shot at that top eight, try to get their points. And part of this prize pool as well, here at Mid-South Outlaws. Just wait on us while we boot back up. Yeah, and if you're, you know, the gamer passion, sometimes you accidentally just press the power button yeah. on the PS5. And if you're waiting it out with us for this next match, pop open another tab, head to one of these uh, other streams from Mid South, excuse me, Mid South Outlaws. Um, keep it locked on Twitter with the hashtag QCS Outlaws. And they're playing Catch Guilty all Gear the action. Strive, Smash Ultimate, Melee, Street Fighter VI. I think I saw some Marvel 3 earlier. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Many, many years ago, uh, Kentucky was what you would call a Marvel state. So. Definitely Changing some old times. heads still playing. Yeah. Still playing Marvel 3 around here. It's fine. Good times. Getting back in there. It always serves as a bit of a mental reset whenever you gotta wait it out for a next match. Whether you're a competitor, just a spectator, just got some time to breathe. There's been a lot of action today here. We near closer to our top eight. Getting closer. You know, I'm not too terribly sure where that lands on the schedule for today, but there is plenty of technical. Yeah. Honestly, bless these boot times as well. Oh, yeah. It's always so funny to me uh, putting it up and seeing Eddie on the screen now. Yeah, buy me. Still not used to it. Buy me. Do you have him? Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. I, I mess with him a little bit. I haven't, I haven't had time, but we'll get in there soon. We haven't seen any Eddie today, have we? No, not a single one. It's a little surprising. Maybe somewhere off stream, possibly. Yeah, I'm sure. With, you know, 
50 plus competitors here. We've seen a bear on yeah. stream multiple times. I'm sure there's been an Eddie out there somewhere. And it's just a matter of time before we start seeing more character representation at these larger Tekken World Tour events. As we go, just to start things. Getting back in there. Slowly but surely. Grinding out that, uh, yeah, unlocking that, that content, battle pass stuff, you yeah. Know? Hey, your stream, your stream setup, you get things unlocked. And this may have been on, uh, may have been on the wrong uh, account. I'm not too sure what we're dealing with right now, but we should be back in action. Special stuff. Turn that on. You don't need it. Playing with special style on. Just practice. You know, I've heard recently <laughs> people talking about uh, players online who will keep a button for the special style yeah. like menu just to mess with their opponent. Because it is really jarring to see that menu constantly popping up in the bottom right screen. I and you need to be able to focus like so much on what your opponent's character is doing right in your face. And if you have a little screen toggling in the bottom right corner. You know, it's an interesting concept. Lot. They expanded upon some of that from uh, Tekken 7, yeah. later Tekken 7. Uh, Anything to get people into the game. Yeah. It won't, it can get you to a certain point. Real, then you're gonna wonder, like, did he learn a bit more about some of these buttons that I'm using? Got see the buttons on the screen right now, getting this uh, first game going between Jaja and Dr. Legend. First large that we've seen on stream today. They are both wanting to do this quick. Really, just slugging it now. Safina is looking like an older Safina. We saw that parry a lot. Yeah. Dr. Legend's master is thinking of it. It's coming out now. The key to any Lars matchup is driving the score. Oh, yeah. And look at that gray health. Yeah, man. So much pressure. This character's good. This character definitely uses the system mechanics as well. Yeah. Especially with the dynamic of the tree and the heat. Just such a potent heat engager. It makes a lot of visual sense, too. Honestly. Oh, yeah. Once you learn about some of the mechanics of the game, everything he does, like you said, definitely flows really well. Dr. Legend trying to keep that flow after a very strong round one. Get some weird off axis stuff on the good drop combos. Which I feel like both of these characters are pure bait for off axis drops. Oh, yeah. You know, I've seen at times the uh, at least one of the Spina BMBs can seem to pretty often go off axis, so definitely seems to be the case with this character at times. Yeah, I'm definitely not built to play a character where my bread and butter might drop sometimes. Yeah. Just because, yeah. It's all for me. about adapting, making like, sure you got those combo routes on lock. Sure. Unfortunately, not seeing it quite as much in this match. Gaja getting to the wall, getting that damage, Stop. forcing the pressure. Then three, force. Right. Going to a final round in this first game. Very competitive matches here. Isn't it great to think about all these things Lars has? Oh yeah, he still has all his uh, other stuff. Too. No, it's not great to think about, <laughs> but uh, we're seeing it no matter player, what. Like, oh right, he has. And that shoulder charge and heat is so prominent. Scarecrow for putting in a lot of work for Doctor Legend, though, trying to close it out. Gets that game one. Like to see a little bit more of the uh, the two one into uh, limited entry, 50s from Lars. Oh yeah. You know, that's your 10 frame punish. Get a pretty hard 50 50 off of 10 frames. It's uh, kind of brutal. And you know, the game he plays. Gonna be at the walls more than ever here on Arena. Actually, it feels, at least when you're playing on it, it feels like a smaller stage than it looks. Yeah, it it's looks bigger. Pretty intimate setting despite you know, visually looking pretty fast. Yeah. And establishing that off the onslaught. Especially with the large flip. 
so many dead breeze. I'm so tired of partying. <laughs> and the party doesn't stop uh, with this character. It does not. Ten oh. hit action here. You know, it's actually funny. I was reading, well, when I was doing a large study, uh, that, that ten string actually is somewhat viable. Oh, I can imagine. I mean, a number of them are. At least, like, maybe the third or fourth hit. Yeah. Pretty often from a character like King as well. Yeah, Dra Dragonoff kind of does some stuff too. Off yeah. The, the role. Very oh. character and character basis with Jaja -Ja really putting in work. He knows. <laughs> multiple tools here to try to get the second round high up the set. Moving quick. He's in a hurry. Very big combo. strong trade on the side of the top. I couldn't make it there in time. Stance action going. A little bit of Lars flip in there. Judge is pretty solid at knowing all his little trans stance oh, transitions yeah. to and use the opponent. With a character like Lars, I mean, yeah. that's part it's of the, the game. Idea, right? yeah. Actually, I recall seeing Fergus tweet fairly recently how this character has really gone in the years. From oh, and pickup tech there to close out that round three. But no, no, Fergus was talking about how this character went from very solid, very, uh, I suppose you could say methodical and neutral. Yeah, right. Um, especially to be everyone's backup yeah, character. Yeah, especially with the old DF2 that's now the full crouch DF2. And now he's partying. Oh, yeah. Jaja's putting it to work, tying this up and going to a game three to decide this loser side. Blast. Got the wall break combo. Mm. If you're large, you oh. should. Yeah, didn't there it even is. spin the tornado what? yet. Until Are that we at Howard break. State right now? You know, I find it interesting I don't how they've, so good. they've sort of taken that you know, concept from Howard State with the yeah. multiple wall breaks, adapted it to pretty much like Mission the Dojo stage of this game, and I kind of like it. Yeah, no, it's it nice. doesn't feel as I guess jarring as Howard State felt at times. Um, then again, the game is still fairly new, so a lot yeah. to get used to. We're not seeing the like occasional triple wall break combos nearly as much, it seems. So it feels like it's a little bit more tame. This yeah, match has been anything but tame. You still, you still need some resources to do those too. Usually, oh like, yeah, heat utilization, rage utilization. <laughs> Lars can definitely get some mileage out of the stage. Uh, it felt great seeing him get this stage. Starting to tighten it up a little bit. <laughs> First two games, there was a lot on the line. Yeah, there is. Side match. Fighting for your tournament life here. Oh, and that really going down in. three one, putting in work for Doctor Legend. No smash. He missed the whiff on his heat too. Oh, the heat man. smash whipping. Oh. Sometimes not a huge deal for Zafina, as we saw. Yeah. A little bit of chip damage there. You want to break those? Oh, he did. He what a rage art. What a call out. Bring Dr. Legend in a pretty commanding spot in this game three. So I saw the hands. Oh. I rage At this stage, it's all about nice start stop flow. Oh, yeah. I cannot stress enough how much that Scarecrow is one putting in work for Dr. Legend right now. Being really smart with where he's placing it. Could potentially get him to stop eight. side though and not enough damage for Dr. Legend to have that rage art as a factor might just close it out here off yeah, the bat moving along in this bracket
fighting for his life. Unfortunately, I believe that is Jaja's exit from the tournament, but did pretty well to get there's, up here. Uh, there's so many players in this bracket. Only one can come yeah, out on top. And they didn't even deal with us today, you know? <laughs> We're over here commentating. Yeah. Ryan. Different world. Yeah, I, uh, partially thinking about competing, but at the same time, seeing what these competitors are having to deal with. Like, there is just so much to the mental stack of Tekken 8. Sometimes I cannot handle that. I, I'm like, definitely, I, <laughs> I've definitely been okay with, uh, not say stepping back, but just kind of like... Yeah, you've got to not just continue to, like, develop yourself as a player. you got to know when to take those breaks at times. When yeah, just really... In terms of level of competition, aside. you know, everyone kind of goes through it. It's sometimes a new game makes you be like, yeah, do I even want to do this anymore? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, for me, it's definitely just like, uh, I'm just approaching it differently. Uh, do I feel like I should have better results sometimes? Sure, everyone does. You know, new game. A lot of new. And the mental side of things is so prominent. Yeah. Like, you've got to take care of yourself mentally as a player before you can really lock in and focus on the video game aspect of things. Because if you're not in the right headspace to compete, your game is going to suffer. And, you know, I feel like we've seen it at times, certainly throughout uh, this bracket today, but just especially from those who can really keep it dialed in. And they're already making top eight in this tournament, uh, securing some Tekken World Tour points. I kind of feel for Dr. Legend right now, because he's basically play, he's about to play three back-to-back -back sets. Sometimes uh, that's what you that need, is, though. Sometimes it's a nice thing to happen. So. I uh, had that happen, I believe, for the last QCS event last summer. I think that's... I had at least like two games back to back on yeah. stream, and so it's a gauntlet to deal with. But you know, some Getting players a lot of screen time today, some players thrive. Doctor Legend certainly continuing to move on in this bracket on the loser side. Doing work against Subway Wang. Well, so it should be interesting. Gonna they both got some pretty, pretty major action. to lose here. A lot to lose, a lot to gain at this point in the bracket. I mean, this could be the difference in, you know, Tekken World Tour points. And both of these players should have secured at least, like I said, one, one Tekken World Tour point. <laughs> They're certainly both vying for more. Can set up. In the last, some straggling matches played. It should be this match and one more to decide our top eight. Nice. And we, then we shall be free to our own device. Coming out to it. I'm trying to get some casuals. Yeah, try to squeeze some in before I head home. Let's All right, get this. into match one. This is my right. That make loss. Round one. Somebody will have to go home after this set, unfortunately. He's gotta weather the storm. Oh yeah. <laughs> literally and figured. Quite literally on this stage. <laughs> Uh, I sure hope they fix the stage on PC at some point. Oh yeah, I know a number, of, another, excuse me, a number of players have been having issues with this stage. Uh, it is really nice visually though. I feel like this is certainly a step above what we got for. Never uh, noticed the tornado games. in the background. Yeah, <laughs> they put a lot of you know effort into the visual fidelity of these stages in this game. It's nice to see you know when you're offline, not having to worry about you no know, crashes or anything. Back. A lot of E-timer tick down on Dr. Legend's side. Looking for a spot and executing there. Going up two rounds to zero in this first game. Quick. Getting it a heat here. 
at the wall. Oh, that's pretty strange. He was in the corner, so he actually didn't get splatted off. Of the big yeah. Button. That was weird. I haven't seen that yet. It's like in the corner of the wall. Subway Wing Tanks game one. Keep in Dr. Legend corner there. Not much to do if Subway Wing takes that first game. Just gotta regroup. Think about how you want to win. Think about why you lost. Round one. I'm still not sure how I feel about this tech. But you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll move on. Sometimes you meet the crash when playing so many games in the Oh yeah. I don't think that's necessarily what's happening with Dr. Legend, but Subway Wang brings his own demands. Absolutely. And, you know, everyone's tournament run has to come to an end at some point. One person ends up being the champion. Now you can go play stress-free games. Everyone else. And enjoy some casuals. We should be getting into our final top eight qualifier here shortly. Pretty soon. Let me see if I can get a peek at who it might be. I was seeing Squall and somebody. I don't know if they're still running a qualifier so, for that top eight qualifier. Yeah, so I saw Uncle George playing, so I assume he was getting his game done with Sonny to see. Yep, Squall and Uncle George. All right. Just ended, so. Going to see some more Reyna and Bear action on stream. All right, it sounds like we're gonna be going ahead and hopping into our top eight here in a moment after a uh, short break. But uh, yeah, keep it locked here. Mid-South Outlaws, keep following along at home on Twitter, on social media with that hashtag QCS Outlaws. Stay tuned for some more tech in action. 